Hey, what's up, Ecosystem? Big show tonight. I've got three live interviews. One, automotive marketing strategy with Jason. Two, Ken's car guru's beef. Three, Atomic 6 carbon fiber composite. So bring your questions and buckle in. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. I am Jay, your host, and I really appreciate. Yeah, you loving the music, man. Me too. I get. I love the music, and you know, I want to tell you this. I really, I look for you guys uh, to see who's going to get in here first. It means a lot to me. So thanks for spending your Tuesday night with me. Two hour show. You know the deal. Here, if this is your first time here, let's talk about it. First, I'm going to give you the welcome, okay, so I roll the car hauler, bring it on in, and then here in a few minutes, we're going to go into the live chat, say hello, because it means a lot that you guys are here, and I'm over here looking at my chat screen, I'm right here looking at the camera, and you guys are looking at your device, and we are communicating, this is happening. Uh, Then we're going to go into industry news, you know, this is the Facebook stuff, the pics, the news, the memes, signs. Uh, broken car haulers, stuff like that. We're going to look at that. It's important to recognize the world for what it is, uh, as if we aren't bombarded with it. Okay, so listen, featured interview number one tonight, Marketing Strategy with Jason. Now, I met Jason on LinkedIn and invited him on the show. He was kind enough to say yes. He has got a lot going on. We're going to learn a lot. Uh, We don't really talk about dealership marketing on this show, but we are tonight. We're going to talk about it a lot. And the way that's going to help you is that, okay, you're a car hauler, and you're hauling cars. And those cars were at the dealership. How does a dealership get its customers, and how can that help you if your car hauling business is, you know, if you want more of the dealership work? Be good to understand what they're talking about and how they're getting their business. So then we're going to talk to Ken at C4 Auto Group. He actually has a beef with car gurus, and he shared it on Facebook, and I talked to him, and Ty knows him, so he's going to come on the show tonight. We're going to talk about that. Now, you guys know, this is a family show. I'm not here to get specific and bash a company, but this is company information, and it's something we need to talk about and look into, and maybe we can, maybe everybody can get a little bit of help here. Maybe we can help. Uh, craft the message better in the future. And also, then we're going to talk to Atomic 6. Okay, carbon fiber composite trailer material. What in the heck is that? It's another new invention, uh, a way to lighten the weight of the trailer and increase capacity. And it's, you know, it's futuristic. And I mean, you know what? If we look at how, you know, when you've got leftover food, what do you do? You throw it in Tupperware. Did they have Tupperware bowls? In the 50s, I got to think way back. I don't know when Tupperware came out, but the point is materials over time do change. This is another new material, so it's time that we talked about it and learn more about it. So that's our lineup for tonight. I appreciate you guys tuning in. It is now time for Hello Chat. Uh, Now I'm going to rewind the chat to the beginning. 
Um, so, you know, I'll catch up with you soon. But if you've got something to say, chat it. If you're enjoying what's happening, like it. Uh, maybe you share it. Maybe you call. You Right now you're like, Grandma, you got to check this guy out. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, Vinny at Viper Transport and Towing says hello. Uh, welcome back to the show, Vinny. You know, all the handshakes and the bumps. Thank you, man, for tuning in. Thank you for being the first one. And it does mean a lot. I do look for you guys in here. Uh, Matt from Anytime Towing Vermont is with us. Thanks for joining the show. He was on the show last week. We got Bill, Bad Apples. Hello, Bill. What's going on, everybody? M Fields. Hey, Jay. It's Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport. Looking forward to the show. And it's such a great help. Thank you. Well, thank you, Marcus, from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. See, I, I already know the jingle. Wendy says hello. Hey, what's up, Wendy? Hello. Hey, trucker truckers. You trucker truckers. Hey, uh, Vinny, I love the intro music. Yeah, me too. Hey, what's up? Shaggy says hello. Shaggy, you've gotten some industry news, so you're going to want to stick around for that. You like the VWs? I know, it's pretty interesting. I will update that at some point. I just, I keep working on other stuff, and I don't get around to it, and I kind of like it. I'm kind of used to it, you know? It's like an old familiar sock. Okay. So, one month to Trucker's Jamboree. Wow, what's Trucker's Jamboree? Put it in the live chat. I'm not familiar with Trucker's Jamboree. Now, you know, is there a Trucker's Jamboree? Nah, I don't know what it is. Jamboree... Dude, share the info, because, um, you know, here's the thing is, in car hauling, we don't have a whole lot of jamborees. We just have a guy flashing $100 bills at the truck stop. And in freight, that all got all kinds of, you got Chrome Shop Mafia and Mid-America Truck Show and all this great stuff. And we just got, you know, we're like Charlie Brown getting a rock on Halloween. We don't get any of that cool stuff. Holy smokes, it's July. I know, isn't that crazy? It is. Trucker Jamboree. Smash the like button. Uh, well, it shouldn't be three hours. I'm going to try to keep it to two. I'm really I'm really hoping to, to at least keep it to two and a half, maybe two and three quarters. Hey, Carrie Simmons, first time here. Thanks for tuning in, Carrie. Means a lot. You know, what's interesting is that, so I, in my spare time, I'm watching YouTubers. I was watching last night, and I, I do appreciate the interaction. I like a show that educates me makes me laugh, makes me think. So that's my goal for you tonight. Um, because it's just me and you, you know? I mean, you know, deal with it. Okay, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> actually, there's a whole live chat here. So, um, Shaggy, welcome to the ecosystem. Like, like, like. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kimberly. Like and share. It means a lot. I gotta... I turn down the fans. I get, it gets hot in here. I get, I get kind of hot and sweaty and amped up. I gotta turn the fans down for the sound, so pardon me if I uh, if I sweat a little bit. Uh, Janine Morris from Bearcat Logistics says hello. Well, hey Janine, how you doing? What's going on? And and you know what? Do us a favor. Tell us where you are, what you're doing, what you're hauling. You know, are you broke down? Are you making money? Are you having a hard time finding freight? I got a little bit of central dispatch in the industry news too, so that should be interesting to some of you. Family show, but have to keep it real for the ecosystem. It is a it is a delicate, delicate balance. Ties coming to Nashville. Yeah, that's an in industry news too. Tuesdays can't come first enough. Lots of info. Thank you, Tom. That is that that means a lot. I I, I agree with you. I like it. Walcott, Iowa. Marks in Walcott, Iowa. Going for six hours tonight. So we're gonna go till two in the morning. That's just great. Jay and Ty should attend the jamboree. So where is the Jamboree, by the way? Um, I know that there is an event this weekend in Oak Grove, Missouri at the truck stop. I don't know how big it is. It needs some extra ice in the ELD Kool-Aid. So I never add ice to the ELD Kool-Aid. I like my Kool-Aid neat and straight up. I like it hardcore because that's the way... ELD likes to keep it. What's up from North Kakalaki? <laughs> you love the show. Thank you so much. I like it too. It means a lot. And I'll tell you what, we're going to jump into the industry news. By the way, um, it just you just made me think. Did you guys, speaking of ELD Kool-Aid, uh, here this one's. Did you see that um, Elaine Chow, uh, she made the news, uh, DOT, she's the DOT spokesperson. 
and that she made the news, and then there was some news about her. Anyways, Google it. Google it. Like, what's the news, Jay? It's a family show. Okay. All right, so let's do some industry news. Let's just go ahead and do that. Um, let's bring up... By the way, this is the... Oh, you can't see that. This is the thumbnail. Um, this was created by... Uh, this was this thumbnail. Well, let's see here. This thumbnail was created by uh, Strategy with Jason, Jason Harris's team. So I called Jason Harris, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, you're going to be on the show, and it's going to be great." And he's, uh, we're doing our video test, and he's in his booth. He's got a a boom arm for his mic, like a pro podcaster, and better background than me. And he's got a staff. I'm like, man, I gotta. I gotta catch up. This guy, he's on the show tonight. Strategy with Jason. Man, he's gonna be great. That's gonna be off the hook. I'm really excited about it. So let's get into some industry news. Thank you, Jason, for making that thumbnail for me. It means a lot. And the audience loves it, too. Because they're just smashing that like button like crazy. A truck didn't bring it. I got it from the store. Speaks for itself. Back hurts from sitting at a desk all day? Let me put this engine down and get you a Midol. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> uh, after 11 hours of driving, you need 10 hours of rest. Says who? 10 hours of rest. Do you guys, do you guys need 10 hours of rest after 11 hours of driving? I mean, do you? Who, can, can you sleep 10 hours? Does anybody sleep 10 hours? I doubt it. Jamboree's in oh Wal Jamboree is in Walcott, Iowa. I get you. Okay. Uh, hey, what's up, Circle Six from PA? Your new guy on the block. Thanks for letting me know. You know my memory is fading. I I can't remember. Like if you're here every week, I got you. But if you're here occasionally, I lose track. And then I call you a newbie or a rookie or you know. Said I'm sorry about that. So thank you for letting me know, Circle Six. And are you a car hauler? That's uh, or you know, are you a hauler, dispatcher, broker, dealer, car shipper? Do you work at a railroad or a port? You're overseas. You're you're trapped on an island now. It sounds three words sounds like it's a movie. Okay, what's he talking about, honey? What's he talking about? Um, is this where you sell cars? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I I need twenty over fifty five. I need 20 over 55, yeah. No, you don't. Do you? Hey, by the way, this is funny. Mark Safe from the DOT Blitz. Now, this was posted, this is already a week ago, which is like, shh, it's like 1964 was a week ago. But anyways, Mark Safe from the DOT Blitz. That's pretty funny use of uh, marking yourself safe. And then this is another way to, I suppose, mark yourself safe. It's pretty, but did you hear this? That... Troopers announced the Operation Bypass trucker crackdown. Like, Operation Bypass. <laughs> like, anywhere you go, right? Oh, that's just great, honey. I thought for sure we could drive through the lake safely. So be careful out there. <laughs> that's, even in a... Even in quicksand, they might locate you. So do not take the quicksand route to get around the scales. It's not worth it, buddy. It's just not worth it. Um, don't try the Kitty Bridge. It's not worth it, man. It's just not worth it. Um, I don't know. Oh, I wrote, here's what I read. Okay. This is in Europe. You can tell by the... I think you can tell by the hauler. And I guess they don't... I don't know. Sometimes they don't use straps. They just use wheel locks. So, so that's good. It's kind of it's kind of the future of when everything's just robots and there's no people. You'll see a lot of that, right? Well, the robot did it again. The robot did it again. She's thinking stinking robots. Hey Jay, Mark sent me from Trucking Answers. I'm one of the moderators on Trucking Answers Company Driver. Well, thank you, Steel Horse. Thanks for tuning in. That's awesome. JNM Auto Transport LLC. Oh, by the way, guys, I want to say this. 
uh, stinking robots was that I had some emails go out like multiple times. If you got an email from me for like four times in the past 24 hours, 48 hours, I'm, I apologize. Um, I'm going to be working on that. I think I've got a meeting with the CRM tomorrow. So I hope to fix that tomorrow afternoon. So I apologize, you guys. Just trying to keep you informed. Okay, what's next? Um, oh yeah, this is called... Uh, that's a crunch bar. That's... Yeah. That's if you... See, you didn't have enough... You knew you didn't have enough room. But you went for it anyways. And now you got a crunch bar. So that's... You just bought a... What did, what did you just buy? Dang! Golly, man. That thing gets crunched. Shush. Oh, it looks like it got lowered, too. Because you've got a lot of... There's a lot of crunchicity. <laughs> Mark the inspection. And crunchicity. Yeah, that was... That was... It was like that. Speaking of... um, So that's... Probably not going to pass too well uh, during the inspection. I probably, I don't know. Would you do, would you do this? Are you going to do that? Okay. Um, this was sent by Vinny. Vinny, you made the news. I told you, man. Vinny made the news. He saw this at Copart. And, and, he, and the guy's clearly not alone. I think we got another one of those in here. Like, really? Is it? Are you really... Like, that's your business model. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do, guys? Because <laughs> how many... Are you by yourself? What we're going to do is we're going to we're gonna load... We're going to get a... We're going to just get a dry van. And if we can't get any any real freight, we're just going to pick up a car. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's the sign that Vinny shared. This is a Copart notice. Unless otherwise permitted by law, all vehicles must be removed... From Copart's facility by the transporter only. So it makes you wonder what 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 happened? Is this is this gonna throw off a thief? Oh, come on, man. I've got the keys and everything. All I gotta do is drive it off, but stupid sign. Okay. Yep, see, told you there's another one. Um and, and this one is, is even more creative. Yeah, I don't have any flags, but I got this shirt. I could just... I guess I could just throw my shirt over it. Will that work? Sure, just throw your shirt over it. Throw your shirt over it, LLC. And then this is... um, It's interesting. I suppose it's an attempt. It's better than nothing. It's better than going with no wheel locks. It just... uh. <laughs> Jeff and Faith and Freedom is with us. Uh, so, yeah. Anybody strapping down this way? Um, so then you've got that. And, you know, you, it, you hate to see. This is why you got to know. You really want to know what's the vehicle like before I get there. So that they... Because I really don't... What I don't want to see is the, is the, the door falling on the car behind it that 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 i, I don't want to see the lift gate going through a sunroof yeah did you order this car with a lift gate in the sunroof no okay <laughs> let me call you back <laughs> oh my god what did he expect is gonna happen yeah that is uh oh did you see that yes yeah, so you sold there's old smoky there you go Better stock up on some high-speed chicken feed, driver. Something. That is not good, man. It was only paying 40 cents a... This is when the driver really hates his dispatcher. Tell me about it. Okay. Uh, never say sorry. They just never do. They always do. However, say, I didn't see you. Really? You didn't see me. Do you see my loading ramp in your grill? Yeah, me too. So... How's that working out for you? Don't you love car hauling news? Oh, okay, speaking of, oh, man. We, we're, we're seeing this probably once a week now. Where you've got the, um, oh, well, at least the airbag. Man, that is crazy. That is insane. And it was probably like, 
LOL, Jelena. BAM! <laughs> LOL, Jelena. Oh. Gotta spice it up somehow. Yeah, he used the LOL, Jelena joke. Okay. You know, this thing gets stuck. Let's go to 18. Rolling so fast, blew your doors off. Thanks, Shaggy. You see Shaggy's Express there. He gets credit. Because... Well, it does appear to be... There is a... I do, I do sense a correlation. I do sense a blowing your doors off correlation. By the way, if you're thinking, is this the guy's show... <laughs> This is this is just the intro. This is the, you know, thank you. You know, this is the the silly part of the show. Where we're just kind of getting things warmed up. You know, it's okay. Don't worry. If you if and if you're watching on demand, you just skip ahead to the thirty minute mark where we have our first interview. It's cool. In the transportation industry, what is a successful key principle you followed to get to the position you're in now? Okay. Found that on Facebook. You know what the answer is? Boot camp. All right. So this is Shaggy's Express boot camp happening in Nashville. Now this is for freight brokers, freight dispatching, learn the world of freight, and guess what? You're going to see Ty at the Nashville boot camp. You want to learn car hauling? With CTS Business Coaching, go to Nashville. Get your tickets now. Call Ty. Email Ty. Ty will help you secure your seat so you can learn what's going on. What kind of stuff are you going to learn? Well, let me tell you. So this is... Now, on Auto Transport Intel, I specialize in tech, current news, whereas Ty is going to teach you specifics of car hauling. But you know where I got this? This is on Central Dispatch. This is a brand new message on Central Dispatch. Who knew about this? Brand new on Central Dispatch. It's about Central Dispatch notifications. Now they they already I, they already had notifications and they were already charging. I'm pretty sure. But I want to say this. You know what is also new? Boom! Central Dispatch now has Learning Center videos. Now listen. I think they had a few videos before. I think they had a, a small small handful. All right, like a like a child's handful or whatever. But this is a, a dozen. Do you know what's really funny? You know who already makes these videos? Auto Transport Intel. This is what I was doing two years ago is starting to make these videos. And now that some of the videos are 20K, 40K, 80K views, guess who's finally catching on? Interesting. Thank you, Central Dispatch. Thank you, Cox Automotive. For validating what I've been saying, that the stuff that I'm making, it is relevant, and we're gonna I think we're gonna see more competition. I'm excited about it. By the way, we're gonna click on your videos because nothing loads yet. It's that new. It's brand new. Alright, I'm excited. Hey, by the way, you think you got the end all be all mobile app? Well, guess what? There's going to be a lot more mobile apps in your new future. Trade Rev welcomes Group 1 Automotive to the revolution. And by the way, here's some real news for you. Free transport. Did you guys know that Group 1 Automotive is advertising free transport to its dealerships? and, and Whoever is moving vehicles with Group, Autom Group 1 Automotive, they're offering free transport for a limited time. How do you feel about being offered free transport do you know why the rates are low do you know why the rates are stuck now you know now it's about to get real hey who out there owns a kia sorento give me pros and cons you know why this is relevant this was shared on facebook okay so people are going to facebook friends to get their information about where they're going to buy their next car do you think that's important you're darn right it's important because it gets into dealership marketing. And by the way, do you know who's also selling lead generation services? Car gurus. And car gurus sold some lead generation services to C4 Auto Group, allegedly. That's the information we have. We're going to learn more about this tonight when we talk to Ken at C4 Auto Group in an hour. I told you this show is about to get real. Hold on to your roller coaster because, hey, did you guys know about this did you guys know that there is now YouTube, trucking YouTuber beef and lawsuit talk? 
If you Google, wait till the show's over, please. But if, if you have to do it, get on your other computer and Google how to sue a YouTuber because the trucking YouTube beef, bam, it is going on, dude. I was watching it last night. About to get real up in here, G. It is. No, I'm serious. By the way, you want to see some, you want me to throw down some more information? You guys ready for some more information? Check this out. The ATI World of Information. All right. So, you guys know about the YouTube channel, right? You know I do the Facebook page. I, I share a Facebook post every day, Facebook news. I've got autotransportintel.com. We've got stuff on ctsbusinesscoaching.com. But what if you want to improve your automotive marketing strategy, right? What do you do? Do you go to Google? You type in automotive marketing strategy? Is that what you do? Well, let's think about this for a second. Now, if you're a customer, you're a car buyer, all right? You want to buy a car. Let's say you're a first-time car buyer, and you've heard about, okay, so I've heard about Carvana and car gurus and true car and what a car and all this car stuff, right? Who do you, who do you go to? I don't know. I want to research it. All right, I'm going to type car shopping into Google. All right. Okay, that's that's something that I think a user is going to do. Look, you know how you know? Because look at the volume. Look at the CPC, cost per click. All right. So if you're paying Google AdWords, this is a pretty good keyword. All right. Okay, best online car buying sites. Now, that's not as much, but this is still pretty relevant. Who comes up? Carvana, True Car, Auto Trader, Cars.com. Now, what if you're the dealership? All right, let's go to the other side of that coin. Look at this. New car leads. Look at the cost per click on this thing. New car leads. If you're a car dealership and you are looking for new customers, who do you talk to? Who's on the back end of this stuff? How do you generate more leads if you're a dealership? How do you bring customers into the dealership? How do you get more traffic? Well, guess what? Car Gurus offers this too. Now, Car Gurus to the user, let's go back again. To the user, the buyer, the first person buy the person first buying a car, they go to cargurus.com, pop up the app, buy a car, use car, whatever, right? Well, guess what? Since they know all these people buying cars on the back end, they can sell those leads to the dealers. So they have a dealer resource center. So how's that working out? Is this working out? Is the pr how's the pricing? We're going to talk more about this to Ken in 30 minutes. But before we do, we're first going to learn more about what is going on in the world of dealership marketing. And we're going to talk to Jason. Jason has his, this is his website, Strategy with Jason. Okay, Strategy, you can go to strategywithjason.com. That's Jason right there. Jason uh, has multiple internet properties where he markets and teaches and consults. This is one of them, ddsolutions.ca. He's also active on Facebook, LinkedIn, right? YouTube. You're going to find Jason Harris in a lot of different places. So what we're going to do is after the break, we're going to come back. We're going to talk to Jason Harris. And I want you to make sure you stick around for that because I've got something very interesting that I think is going to develop through this show as we go from talking to Jason, then we talk to Ken, and then we're going to go into the Atomic Six interview. By the way, I want to ask you the CTS business coaching question of the day. And as I do that, all right, I'm going to say that first, I'm going to say the question, then I'm going to switch the camera. Do you have an automotive marketing strategy? to build your book of business. Whether you're a carrier, a broker, a dealer, do you have a strategy of how you generate leads? And is it is it just in your mind? Do you talk about it? Have you written it down? That is the CTS, Business Coaching, question of the day. I ask you, do you have an automotive marketing strategy? We're going to meet Jason Harris in a second. I hope you'll stick around. I think you're going to like this.
Jason Harris has over 15 years of automotive industry experience. Jason's knowledge and experience differs greatly from others because of his need to understand every aspect of the industry. He takes a very hands-on approach and feels participation with his clients is invaluable. He works to improve all of the processes and benchmarks his progress to show growth. Jason worked from the bottom, cleaning cars, selling cars, learning the importance of marketing, and moving up to owning a dealership. Before long, he became a dealership principal. Jason has always had a love for learning and keeping up with the ever-changing industry and felt at home helping others. Okay, cool. So we're going to be joined by Jason here in a second. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get everything set um, and he'll be here. Sure, I sent the invite to him. He'll be here shortly. So now we are into. We're going to be in the first interview here. Man, we're already at the thirty-minute mark. Man, this this thing goes so fast. Okay, take care, Shaggy. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you on the flip side. You know, people do come and go, and I I, I like that. Oh, check this out. Look at this. I got a I got a thread. Can he get the thread? So um. I did get the thread. I think I did. I need to, let's see, make a note. I need to get the scissors here. Let's see. I'm going to make a note while Jason's on his way. Get the scissors and cut the thread. Let's see here. What's he doing? What's he doing, honey? He's making a voice. He's making a note to cut the thread. Cut, cut the thread. <laughs> cut the thread. Really? He did that? He made a note. I was live. I wasted my time. Take care, Jeff. Good seeing you, buddy. Uh, and I missed the live chat there. All the cars and all the trucks, too. Seems like nothing but F-350s. Oh, you know why that is? Because volume is down. We were talking about that last week. I mean, I'm not... Obviously, this is no news to you. And I'll tell you what we can do. While we're waiting for Jason to uh, join the meeting, I know he'll be here soon. Is that is that a thread or a hair? It's a th It's a hat thread. Um, I hope that's not my hair. My goodness. That'd be terrible. Let's go look at Central Dispatch, by the way. I, I want to show you this. Because I, I, I think that this is, this is an incredible sign that, uh, there, I think everybody is about to improve their process. Um, not only Ty and I know this because we've been talking to folks and companies. Cox Automotive and Central Dispatch is not one of the companies that I'm in touch with. Um, but yet they are also on the horse. Look at this. It actually says, I can't even believe it. It says, you told us you wanted improvements in the, look at this. Can you believe this? You told us you wanted improvements in the timeliness and accuracy of your saved search notifications. So we've invested in technology to do exactly that. I got two questions. One, where did you get the feedback that people wanted saved search notifications? I didn't know that you could give feed. Oh, there <laughs> here it is. People use that? Wow. Never even seen this before. Never noticed that. Okay. All right. Cool. There's, there's the answer. Two, you've invested in technology. You mean you don't already have it? You're Cox Automotive. You've got... Okay, come on. Seriously. Now, I realize Central Dispatch is not Cox Automotive, but they're owned by Cox Automotive. Cox Automotive owns like half... It, it literally seems like half of the automotive solutions when you're talking about dealerships and customers buying cars. And yet you needed to invest in the technology. That's, come on, really? Okay, all right, fine, I'll take it. I'll take it at face value. If you're currently enrolled in CD notifications, we've automatically updated your account to CD Notify. Oh, that's catchy. Is that is that trademarked? Our improved notification service, which is delivering these improvements. If you're not enrolled, sign up for CD Notify. By the way, you know that's why these these notifications, the pay for these notifications, if if you're too fast, then you're beating the notifications. I'm just saying. Don't be too fast. Don't be such a fast dispatcher. Don't be so fast. Um all right, Jason, where are you? Oh, man, I'm going to I'm going to send you another email, bro. Um uh, and that's okay. 
this, this listen this is a family show it's a it's a free environment you, you don't you don't even have to join me you know what that's fine jason you're so i bet you're so busy strategizing okay that's a joke no you know what's really cool actually we're gonna watch one of jason's um videos here in a second because um when i was on linkedin geez where am i now jay where'd you go you totally left the screen when I was on LinkedIn and I was I was interacting with Jason, I messaged him and we made we connected. Um, in my feed, kept popping. And since we connected, and he sent me a video in my LinkedIn feed. This is good to know is that because he sent me a video, he was saying he knew this about the algorithm, or at least he he was speculating. He put this together is that uh, by sending me a video in LinkedIn as a message, it was increasing his appearance in my feed uh, in LinkedIn. And then I kept seeing his videos. He was on an airplane. He was at a coffee shop. And everywhere he went, he's making videos of himself consulting. Now, not everybody's going to do that. Although, you and I both know, there are guys that are making a lot of videos that where they're at their trailer, loading their trailer, talking about their trailer. They're shooting a lot while they're working. So they're uh, not only working, but making business while working, making business content. And that's an interesting strategy, which I think is probably one of Jason's strategies, but I'm guessing. <laughs> that's okay, Jason. I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to, I sent, I sent two invites. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back to ATI World of Information for a second. Check this out. Ooh, look, here, look, this is going to be, we're going to have picture in pick. Check this out. I don't think this has been done before. I, I'm on, I got two pictures there. All right, let's do this. I saw something in the live chat. It's either Goosenick or Heavy Wreckers. Hey, what's up, Jay? New here, Bun Your Transport. Thanks for tuning in, Brian. Means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, I saw a question. I thought I saw a question, and I wanted to talk about it. And I thought it had to do with... Oh, and I forgot to show Ty's phone number. So Ty is going to be in Nashville. Can't find the question. Okay. So, oh yeah, you know what? Let's do this. Check this out, guys. Let's watch this video. CarGurus is known for its trust and transparency. We're providing more information on more cars in our marketplace than any other in the market. CarGurus has become the number one consumer site for automotive shopping in the United States. The largest audience, the largest mobile audience, and a down funnel shopper who's ready to purchase. The CarGuru shopper is not only the largest audience in the industry, they're the most engaged shoppers. Once they come into that dealership, they're comfortable knowing they've done all their research and are ready to buy from the CarGurus dealers. We at CarGurus believe that our partnership with our dealer customers is for the long term. We go on site to dealerships and talk to them about how they're using our program, but also how they're using their entire tech stack. We also have tools within the product itself in the dashboard, such as market analysis, so you know which vehicles are hot in your market today, and a pricing tool that's going to tell you exactly how your vehicle stacks up against other light cars in the market. So that combination of people, product, and process really presents the full solution from CarGurus. CarGurus uses technology to match buyers to the right dealers by processing the vast amounts of data that's out there to actually zero in on what exactly they're looking at. Every day, for example, we process over 5 million listings to do all the analysis that we need on every vehicle. It gives us a very accurate view into the market. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is that we live and breathe data, and we want to share that expertise with dealerships. Car shopping is a really tough process. People spend something like 15 hours doing all of the research that it takes to feel confident and ready to buy. We give shoppers the critical information on pricing and dealer ratings that they need to be ready to purchase. Over 80% of shoppers tell us that they wouldn't purchase a used car without third-party pricing validation. In a world where car shoppers visit only one or two dealerships before making a purchase, 
Everyone who walks in the door matters. And CarGurus delivers informed, confident, and ready to buy shoppers to dealerships. Okay, so, um, oops, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, guys, so I, you know what? So I just got a, I was just reading a message from Jason. Um, and, you know, these technical issues come up. There's some kind of, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not even sure how to categorize that issue. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to see if I can get Ken in here early. And we're just going to, we're going to move. We're going to try and do that. We're going to move Jason to spot two or three based on whatever happens next. So here's what I'm going to do. Ken, if you are watching, you're about to get your email invite. And we're just going to go to your interview, and then we will, um, and then we'll we'll bring Jason in whenever we can. So this is a live show, and anything can happen. And um, you know, that's you just have to roll with it, right? I, I think I said this before: the being live and having to roll with the punches is much like actually car hauling. I mean, I don't drive, and I don't load and unload. But um, I'm on the hook here, and I gotta, you know, I gotta think on my feet and figure it out. Um, I know. Did you guys see that video clip last week where Kathleen McCann, president of United Road, was talking about how a car hauler is a precious item? Right. This is not just a driver. This is not somebody that knows something about cars, drives trucks, knows something about cars, knows how to strap down a car maybe knows, you know, the map or knows a few locations. No, this is a very complicated situation where everything you pick up, you have to think about where it's going to go on the truck because you want to move it as few times as possible. Plus, you have to be careful and detail-oriented during the inspection, during loading, space considerations. You got to be careful with the truck. You don't want to crunch the car like we saw that crunch bar car, all right? You, you have to think about what you're going to pick up, where you're going to drop off. Plus, you got to manage all the ELD garbage. You know, you talk, you, I talk about the, the, uh, the ELD, you know, what is this? What is this? Really, this is an ELD? Yeah, this pretty much, pretty much. Okay, that's not fair to ELD manufacturers. But the point is, my gosh, like you don't have enough problems. So you got to figure out, think about where things are going to go. You got to be on time. For pickup, be on time for delivery. You have multiple pickups and deliveries. You have your inspections to do. Plus, you have to drive this truck. What if you're in the mountains? What if you're in crazy weather? Okay? I mean, it's crazy. So, I point that out because when we're live, man, we, we got to go. We got to roll with the punches. We got to do what we got to do. And so, here we are. I'll tell you what, Ken. I don't know if you were catching early, but I brought you in a little bit early. I've cool? been watching the show the whole time. It's you have it's information. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I, pre- I appreciate that. And you know what I'm going to do too is I'm going to um I'm going to invite I'm going to invite Ty to join us. Okay. Um and but before I do, why don't you go ahead? Let's do this. Before I invite Ty. Sure. Um I'm going to I'm going to share the screen and let's read Let's talk about what got us here in the first place, okay? Let's see right, what we yep. got. Okay, so I've got, let's see here, let's do this. I'm going to read your, okay. So you, you, you shared, okay. You shared, let's do this. You shared, okay, okay. So we got, all right, you shared this on Facebook, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. You, 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 we need your help. When C4 opened our doors, we subscribe to Car Gurus and their web-based marketing service for dealers. For a one-year commitment, we paid a thousand dollars a month for their services, which was well worth it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. In the last month, they came to us with a two hundred percent increase. No change of service for their marketing services per month. We have argued with them. Have tried to negotiate a more favorable increase, in which they have denied because they say C four has better lead generation than other dealers in the area. So here we are doing good work, and they want to penalize us for it. Currently, we suspended our agreement with car groomers and have started looking for other options. 
Please share this post to help us attract new likes to our page. To also let people know how greedy Car Gurus really is. You're frustrated. That's understandable. Sure. Yeah. So tell tell us more about it. Tell us what what you're involved, you know, your business and what's going on and how this happened. Sure. So we're a uh, we're an independent dealer. Uh, we're based out of Northeast Oklahoma. Have two locations, one in Claremore, Oklahoma, which is just right outside of Tulsa, about 20 miles. And then uh, further north uh, in the corner uh, in Miami, Oklahoma, uh, which is about 30 miles from Joplin. Um, you know, when we started out, I, I've been in the car business for a while. I was actually very heavy in the freight world for many years, but we can talk about that some other time. But, um, you know, I was in a, a dealership <clears throat> with a, a gentleman. He didn't use car gurus. I kept hearing all the success car gurus uh, was, was doing for dealers uh, in generating leads, getting customers into their stores, so on and so forth. Car gurus is probably not, you know, at times the most advantageous um, platform to use for certain reasons. Like if your car sits on there over 90 days, they start aging that car. But they do drive people into your uh, into your emails, into your, into sending you emails and inquiring about your car and and um, I, you know, if you pay enough, they'll put banner ads on Facebook and LinkedIn and, you know, all these places. So, you know, for a thousand month, that is a pretty good chunk for a small operation like us, but it's worth it because you're not paying a, a big time operation, marketing salary, so on and so forth. And it right. works. That's right. And right. so now you're kind of like, well, yeah, okay, let's keep going. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it was working. That's right. For the record. Yeah. The price for what was happening, yeah. the turnaround, it was working for you. Yeah, it was working. And, and you know, the way I, I would explain it is, you know, we feel like at $1,000 a month, we're paying for a pretty darn nice, you know, uh, low-end Lexus, okay? Uh, but now with their increase, which is roughly to, to keep and maintain the same services with CarGuru, um we basically have to triple what we're spending. Okay. And so I'm still in that Lexus and I'm not getting to the Mercedes and I'm like, why am I going to give you an additional two grand a month uh, for, for really the same thing you've been doing for me. Well, and that's me, where it becomes really a challenge. Let me ask you this. Okay. So I want to, I, I was watching that. Did you see that video ad that I ran? Yeah, I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's great because I was going to ask, so did, I mean, did any, did people come to your dealership? No. And you know, I, I saw that and they're like, Oh, we want to work with the dealer and we want to do this. Well, I'm not the only guy in the world who's having this issue with card guru. If you go out and you look at, uh, if you put in Google car guru increase, you know, anything relating to that topic, you're going to pull up tons of guys that have said, I was with car gurus two years ago. They came in, they gave me a thousand, a 500% increase. And we just, we're not paying that, you know? Um, and so it's not, I'm not just the only one. I'm just, you know, frustrated that, you know, here we had a tool that was actually working and now, you know, we're getting strong arm to pay more. And quite frankly, I I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. So, Okay, so what what did what what did you get? If you didn't get people at your dealership and all the you know the white glove treatment, what, what are some of the what are some of the basic things you could say? Like you you got so you got leads, right? Got leads, yeah. Okay, you got leads is and that's that's essentially what you got, right? That's it, yeah. And we all yeah. need leads. I mean, sure. it's understandable. Like I just was showing Central Dispatch has CD Notify, so that's a load mm. board that will feed you load notifications. Basically, those are leads, right? Yep. Those are carrier right. carrier load leads. So we all need leads. That's understandable. And it makes sense that they have leads because they've got so many people buying, right? Right. So they yeah. know they've got somebody near you in Oklahoma. That would probably make sense with the cars you've got in inventory, right? Yep. Yep. So that's that's logical. Yes. Why? Right. But did, so did, I guess you asked him, why did the price go up? Yeah, and basically, here's 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 where I just almost kind of, I don't know, fell out of my chair, you know, 
couldn't understand it. I, there is a TV show on Discovery I enjoy watching. It's called Go, Gold Rush. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. But I know, about, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay, so there's these guys up in the Yukon that are mining for gold, and some of them lease land from people, and uh, the people they lease the land from gets a royalty uh, for every ounce of gold they, they dig. And so <clears throat> this one particular guy, um, when he hits a certain threshold, the royalty goes up. And so now he's got to pay more to the landowner, uh, so it almost comes cost prohibitive for him to continue mining beyond that point because he's given more of the of the profits away. Well, in this particular case, Car Guru comes to us and they say, you're getting so many more leads than people in your market. We believe that you need to be paying more. So I said, so what you're saying is, is we're successful. We're doing the right things. We're using your tools. We're using your platform. And because of that, you want to charge me more. And essentially, yeah, that's what they said. Well, and that makes no that makes no sense to me. Well, you know, I was going to say, what about this? Why don't they, um, why don't they then alter their business model and do more of a royalty based rather than this flat fee? Yeah, and, you know. And even if it, and the flat fee really went way up, right? I mean, right, that's a big right. Jump. Yeah, so you go you go from a thousand bucks a month to twenty nine hundred. You know, uh, there's there's you know the old saying, a little skin in the game. Well, yes. I'd love for these guys to say every deal you close, we want a percentage of. All right, so now you're you we have a parallel business interest, right? We are working together for the same goal, you know. Uh, but their business interest is to beef up their bottom line. My business interest is to keep my bottom line healthy by managing, you know, costs and expense and everything else. And, you know, somewhere in here, we're not we're not communicating very effectively. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Ty. Ty just joined us. And, Hi, Ty. Uh, hey, Ty. Say hello again, Ty. No, I can't hear you. No hablo el sando. Somebody somewhere is going to say, what did he say? <laughs> I don't know if I still, but okay. So let's keep going. He's going to, he's going to get that. He'll get that fixed. Yeah, sure. Um, I think he's got his sound muted and I think I'll bet you he's texting me. Yeah, he's texting me. I knew it. Ty's always texting me, man. We, we talk constantly. Send another link. All right. I'll send you another link. So I'll tell you what, Ty, leave that link. Okay. Check, check. One, two. You know, it's, some shows are funny like this, man. It's great. Um, so here, do this. Ty, leave this meeting and I'll send you a new link, okay? All right, cool. So, um, okay, so that's, I mean, as you said, I mean, you're getting you're getting a large volume. Are they yep. quality leads? Are they, you know? you know? Yeah, I would say your cost, your cost to convert is a little high, but yeah, it's actually, they're pretty decent leads, you know? Um, so it, it's tough because, you know, when you feel like you've got, you know, one of the better marketing tools at your disposal, but yet now you're, you know, going to be, you know, paying triple what you've been paying, uh, you know, it just, it just pisses you off. <laughs> so let I mean, me, that's all there is to it. well, how about that? Let's do it this way. Um, since it's a, you know, it's a, American enterprise freedom of business system. All right, so we, I didn't say that anywhere near what a, how a professor would say that, but nonetheless, what what's the competition? Who who's next? Who Well, you know, we, we just actually signed up with Auto Trader today. Okay. And for uh 30 cars to be on there plus having uh 10 or 15 uh premium spots within their uh website, uh I think it's like 400 bucks a month. You know, so oh, wow. I, if it works that well, I mean, if you would think you were talking about Cox, Auto Trader is a Cox uh, holding. Everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, it's an old name. You know, I remember back in the day, you got the Auto Trader book to look up, you know, the car you wanted and uh, spend Flip hours. Yeah. yeah, circling, you know. You, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could tell you a story, a great story. Anyway, we won't get into that. Uh, but, okay. but, you know, uh, so you've got Auto Trader. 
you know, the, the reality is, is we as a, de- as a, as a small dealership really take more advantage of social media than what we do. Um, you know, this is why being on here tonight is good for us, quite frankly. Um, even though we're not in the, um, the hauling side of it, you know, we can have an influence on all the people who are participating here because if we're buying cars at the auction, we got to get them to the dealership. And so, you know, I'm very familiar with trucking operations, how they work. You want to be loaded with those revenue paying miles and not deadheading from one side of town to the other to dead back to go back to the other side. You know, it just, it doesn't work. Well, and that's why Mike check, Ty, you good? Check, check. All right. Welcome to the show, Ty. Ty how you doing? I'm good. All right, cool. Hi, Ty. And hey, you Ken. Know, your timing is great because we literally, he was just talking about, right, even though we're talking to Ken, dealership, he was just talking about he's got to get his cars from the auction somehow. Right. How's he going to get his cars from the auction? Yeah. I'm going to you, you gonna use, buy cars at auctions? With a, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, he's going to use his mobile app. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I didn't it, know anybody went to auctions anymore. What? No, 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 auctions. Yeah, thing of the past. It's <laughs> right. a thing of the past. Yeah, exactly. So, but you know, I mean, and so yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a circle that we all want to participate in and do well off of, right? And when somebody comes into your business, it kind of throws you a monkey wrench. Uh, and I and also want to back up. Don't take it as if I'm I'm crying and whining and and all these other things. Hey, it's, this is America. If you believe your value and your service is worth three times what I'm paying, God bless you. But that's what I love about America. I have the rise of consumer to dump you and I'll dump you because, you know, at some point, show me the money, show me the value, show me where you give a dang about my business and you want to see it improve. So may, as it improves, you know, maybe someday if car guru were thinking a little bit out of the box, I would have car guru ambassadors in every market. And I would say Tim Clark with C4 Auto Group is a car guru ambassador for Northeast Oklahoma. If you don't think we're worth the money that we're charging, you call Ken. He'll walk his little fat butt into your office and he can sell it a heck of a lot better than we ever could. Car guru needs to shift the mindset from we're an online subscription, car shopping experience, conversion, lead generation. No, you're not. What you are is a money-making machine that needs to continue to drive revenue, which meet, which continues to drive value back to shareholders. So someday you can sell to Cox, and Cox can then rebrand you or whatever they want. But go out there, think out of the box, get your car guru ambassador, you know, people going for you. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, think out of the box. Don't be stale. And we well, and we know this, Ty. We know this because we know companies that that. They, they they seem to ramp up what they charge because and I, by the way I want to say this too this is a bitter pill for all of us because we all have pricing levels that we determine for our customers and sometimes the feedback we get is not good but we need it all mm-hmm. right right that mm-hmm. nobody is free from this right nope. and so right. but at the same time we also know companies that don't seem to listen to their customers continue to raise the prices thinking that they you know ever their their stuff doesn't stink and they just don't listen well which one's it gonna be yeah yeah this i call this the obamacare fix you (laughs) know i mean they're they're just they're trying to escalate family show yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. You know, but I, you know, my wife just waved at me like, "Shut your mouth." You know, um, I've got a lot of choice words, but, uh, but you know, it's it's an accelerated cost. It. You're just sitting here going, you know, really. I mean, give me a little something extra if you're going to charge me extra. You know, don't just keep me status status quo. Well, and this will be interesting. Is let's say let's see what happens with Auto Trader. Maybe yeah. you don't get the same level of leads and then that'll be feedback or maybe you get better leads. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that be interesting? It would be. And it, this actually, so this could be, I mean, hopefully does this, I don't know. How long have you been using car gurus? Let's ask that question. A uh, little, little over a year and a half. Okay. So, so, so you've settled into a rhythm. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So then you're going to have to uh, retweak the recipe. 
right? Yeah, a yeah. The good part is, is you know, I believe people. Uh, I, I think the the part that that it, what's interesting to me there's a there's a website called VRBO and yeah, it's people. I don't know if you've heard about, it, but yeah. this is this is a company that we've used for five, six, seven years, and they help people rent out their vacation homes. Yeah. And we've never incre- we've never had an increase like this. They've merged with companies, they've sold, they've done all kinds of stuff. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, I'm still struggling with how can you, how can you say you're going to get the same service for 200 <laughs> of the cost? So and I want to say this for Abdul. He just joined us. Anybody joining us right now, we're talking to Ken at C4 Auto Group. Ken has a dealership and he gets his many, used to get many new car buying leads or what do you, what's most of your inventory? New or used? I think it's uh, used. Used, yeah. Oh, yeah, used. Okay, yeah. but but getting leads from car buyers that were searching for used vehicles that were in your yes. area, and and you, you were getting a lot of your leads from car gurus, and correct. You've run into an intersection with them based on their pricing. Is there is there anything else that you didn't really like? Uh, you know, I, no. I mean, there's nothing I can really Everything say. Else was okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not, you know, every once in a while, I mean, our sales rep's a nice guy. Um, sometimes okay. you say, Hey, we're not ready for this particular service. And, you know, Bez is a good sales guy. He's like, you know, don't take no for an answer, but you know, no, not really. I mean, you know, okay. I'll say this, you know, we're, we're really trying to trying to do something here. If you're whoever's watching this right now, if they have Facebook, then go on Facebook, go to C4 auto group, um our our facebook page we made a post the other day if you could share it that'd be great um because i kind of want car guru to see you know we're we're one of the folks out here who really aren't um just gonna take it just for the sake of taking it if we don't have to i'm gonna pull up so if you go to here is your what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put in the live chat now you won't see this but i just put into the live chat facebook.com forward slash c4 auto group and right. anybody clicks on that link you'll go to the c4 auto group facebook page and yeah. you can continue to read about this beef i mean what would you like to see if you could if you know if if, if car gurus called you tomorrow and said okay how do we make this better what what would you say well you know i'd say okay i'm i'm, I'm with you you know if you need a nominal increase let's talk you know, nominal being maybe 8%, 10%, you know, getting beyond 10 is going to be a little bit stretched, you know, but if you need incremental additional, uh, you know, money, maybe that's something we can do. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, again, I'm just, you know, just don't want to just start writing checks for the sake of writing checks, because, you know, again, I, I just don't see in my mind, I can't, can't really justify same service, you know, three times the cost. What if, um, what if more than leads they could, I don't know, there was more of, like you talked about the ambassador idea. What if there was more of a, some, more of a meshing of service and I don't know, is there something is it, like I, maybe you, maybe you could appear on their mobile app if people were searching, you know, yeah. I don't know, some kind of advertising or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that'd be great, too. Or, you know, you could maybe post your post. You know, maybe they host videos or, um, you know, I don't know, something about your dealership and what makes you different and unique. I mean, uh, we have a lot of unique and different things um, within us. I mean, one of them is Adam, who is one of the best guys in the world, and Sean, who's working hard. And they're all, you know, we're just we're we're just we're just guys out here trying to make, you know, great deals and, and make people happy. And, you know, what, what else there is in life? What else is there in life to do? You know? Right. And I was thinking like, I mean, as you're talking about that, um, and I know Jason was talking about this too, is that, you know, sometimes what happens is after we, right now everyone's making apps and, and building up technology, but sometimes an ad What's better than an ad is an as just an actual person actually experiencing actual happiness. Yeah, 
right so rather than you know you see the guy come out and walk his dog and get the mail and this car is there and everybody waves well, obviously that's an ad okay that's yeah. obviously scripted okay yeah. but what yeah. if there was a camera that kind of like when they used to win the ed mcmahon's million dollars right and there's a camera yeah. there and it's real they're really winning oh my god that's yeah. the kind of thing that maybe if there was that kind of content then you could justify some kind of something something i mean i'm just i'm i am i'm trying to what i'm trying to do right now is i'm trying to brainstorm on behalf of car gurus a way to yeah. justify because if they need money i don't know and i thought there was a big investment round I, I i you know i'm not up on car gurus news and by the way i want to say this too is and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to ty yeah because exactly, i get talking i start i get winded and i've you know i'm just going crazy here but I do want to say this is that I did reach out to car gurus for comment. I did not hear back. So, you know, I did put out a message. I was hoping that they'd get to me. What were you going to say, Ty? And I, and I think we got to let Ken go in a bit. But please, Ty. Well, um, I don't want to take away the car guru thunder. But for all the guys in our audience, I want to especially thank Ken for coming on here. Because I want people to see this is a car dealer. So I talk to everybody on the phone every day, and I've got the five categories. Ken is an independent car dealer, and he's a real person that has real life problems. So the more, what I try to encourage our guys to do, the transport guys, I try to encourage them. This is a guy right here who has a real life, a real lot, and used cars, and we're friends. Ken and I do business together, and we're friends, and we discuss these things. So this is beautiful to me because I get everybody gets to see my relationship with one of my customers, one of my clients, and I know what my customers are going through, some of their pains, some of their gains. What What's bothering you today, Ken? Besides, I just need my car's home, Ty. Hurry up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we still have four to get, Ty, in Kansas City. Um, I'm just working on it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not late yet, right? No, 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 no. But uh, this, is, this is beautiful, I think, for ATI, for for all of our audience, especially, and Ken, thank you very much. But mm -hmm. as far sure. as the car guru goes, man, I, I don't know. I I remember when it first came out, I thought, man, this is amazing. I mean, you can right. sit here and look at cars all day long. And if you're a car freak like me, wow. You know, yeah. you can start spreading the search and doing the stuff. So, I mean, it's cool, but I would have to agree. I mean, look at look at us as carriers. I mean, I walk in and I say, "Hey, what used to be two two twenty five, two fifty? Let's just make it four fifty, okay?" Right. Yeah, and, and like that. yeah, and and the next call is going to be to Jed down the street. Yeah, um, Billy Bob Towing. Yeah, Billy Bob yeah. Trucking. Yeah, yeah, he'll do it. You know, and it's and it you know, but that's, again, I'm not I'm not faulting Car Guru if they feel their service is worth that much. God bless them run with it but again as a consumer i'm saying no it's not worth that much to me well and here's what i know to be true in our region our area car dealers like yourself ken they they have more control more power than people realize and i'm not saying hey car guru look out but ultimately at the end of the day who is the customer it's you yeah and if your customer's not happy they, they pack it up and leave yeah you know, I yeah don't know how these what is, what is a new car store pay for this service? Holy cow. <laughs> I've actually, uh, I was, I was talking to a guy about that and um, he said that basically they were spending almost five times what I was, what I've been hit with. So 15 in a month, but he's also got probably five, 600 units. So your cost per car is probably not that bad. My cost per car is quite a bit higher than his, you know, but, but I mean, well, and two, here's another cool story. I was at your lot this week and what, yes. just, I was there for what, maybe an hour. Yeah. No joke. Three people come walking in. I mean, it was crazy busy. I mean, Claremore, Oklahoma is a cool town, cool yeah. people in there. And it, it was like, wow. And I got to see it all. Yeah. <laughs> it. Yeah. We call that ducks on the pond. We had three ducks on the pond that day. So, you know, that was pretty good. Um, and, and actually, we, uh, we, out of those three, we sold two. So, I mean, you know, a, a good averages for us. Um, yeah. And that's why, you know, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. If you're driving down I-44, you'll see a C4 auto billboard. If you're in prior Oklahoma, it's right across from one of the major dealerships there. Um, you know, we try to sponsor stuff that we can. Uh, my old high school, Squally High School, had a 
a quarterback uh, fishing tournament, quarterback club fishing tournament this past Saturday. We donated some fishing reels. I mean, so my goal is not just to segment myself just with car gurus. I know we have got to be more visible outside of just that one platform. Yeah. And you made some interesting points there that I tell a lot of my guys, local business likes to do business with local business. True. Yeah. So True. you're invested in the com- in the community, and that's what I tell a lot of these guys. I say, start in your own backyard. Go meet a guy like Ken. See what's going on in his life. Yeah. I mean, he may already have a carrier, and that's fine, but go see what Ken's doing. And yeah. And stuff like that, rod and reels and being in the community, I mean, that that proves what I'm saying to be true. Yeah. And car dealers are heavily invested in local community, guaranteed. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And a, and a car guru can never replace that. Yeah, I'm so glad you said that, Ty, because I was so busy thinking about the car guru story that, um, I mean, really, it's, it is, as you talk about, knowing the auction and knowing the dealer, that if you are, if you're going to really hit it off in your area and build your book of business, get to know local dealers and the people at the auction. Yeah, and, and I and I do. I really appreciate Ken you being here and sharing this time with us because it is really neat. To I I I think you're the first dealer to actually be on the show. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm you know I'm glad to That's be the, awesome. the 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 first. You know <laughs> who don't want to be first? But you know one thing I would do if and this is just a suggestion if I were a car hauler independent working with other people. You know, I see Ty at the auctions every time I'm there, he's there, you know, and I think if if I had a truck out there, you know, go stick a business card under the windshield of all the cars out there in the parking lot. Chances are you're going to get a phone call before that auction's over. Yeah. Almost guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. That's a good one. That is a good one, Ken. I hadn't even thought of that one. (laughs) Yeah. I mean. It you know just just stick something under that windshield because I'll promise you they're they're just like everybody I mean they're got, they bought it they got to get it somewhere and yeah. and in reality the way the auctions are working today and the way they were working a year ago it's still that same way right now we hear about all this technology and and great stuff but that's not that hasn't changed anything today right mm-hmm. yeah. Now, and Ken, like, here's a good question that I would love for you to answer in, for, on this show. You know, what, one of the reasons, what are some of the reasons you go to an auction? I mean, besides well, I'm just to buy cars. Well, I mean, first of all, you get camaraderie. I mean, there you go. on your peers. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a fact. I mean, uh, it's amazing how many guys know where I live or the, the area in which I live. Uh, there's there's a really guy, a nice guy from Springfield. It's an auctioneer. Yeah, and plus you get to make friends with those guys. They'll help you out a little bit. Not saying they'll give you something for free, but you know they'll let you know kind of when you know something cool is coming up, or maybe what this guy's willing to take for that car, and so on. Well, until you, it's relationship. I mean, absolutely. You talk to guys, you're like, hey, what are you doing? What's going on in your world? What's hot? What's not? How? What's yeah. this? How, how are you doing with Car Guru? Do you have the same problem I do? And I yeah. mean, it's one on one. It's relationship, and that's what I preach to these guys all the time. And I mean, it's it's very important to have relationships with people. Yeah. So you yeah. nailed it. Best best interview ever. Thank well, you. You know, I I just try a little bit. And let me ask you this: um, uh, Ken, do you can you stay with us another ten minutes or so, or do you need to go? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've got I've got some water. I had Mexican food tonight, so oh got... yeah, man, that sounds good. I had a salad. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah. My wife was like, "I'm not eating salad tonight." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I go for some cheese enchiladas and some rice and beans. No, you're talking oh, dirty now. Man. Let's go. I'm all about that, dude. And a margarita, maybe two. Uh, salt on the and rim. And a cerveza. Check. Yeah, sure. man. Uh, right. I, I like Modelo, but I'll drink Dos Equis. I'll take Corona with lime anytime. Yeah. Have you ever tried Modelo Negro? Absolutely. I did, You know, I didn't think I would like a dark beer, but I love that with a lime. And it's real. Oh, I don't think I've had it with lime. It's really good. Oh, it's really- yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. You know, probably I don't, we're getting way off. Yeah, no, go for it. 
One of the best places, Mexican food places in Kansas City, is uh, over off 69 Highway. I can't think of the site. What's the street over there, babe? I can't think of it. Uh, jalapenos. Oh. You know I, what I'm talking about? I, you know what? In Stanley. I, where, and where, where, Stanley? It's in Stanley, I think, yeah. Stanley. It's on the Kansas side. There is a jalapenos. Kimberly goes there. I don't know if I know jalapenos. It's good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure Kimberly knows that one. Yeah. Hey, Jay. Yeah. Did Jason ever come around? So I got a message for, from him. He is going to have to take a rain check. And it's unfortunate because, man, he's got a great studio set up. It's really, we're going to have him back because he's got great information and he's got a great setup right now. I mean, right now I know he's really disappointed that he can't make it. It happens. And yeah. we're just, we're just well, going to roll with it. I thought it'd be fun to have him and Ken on the same time. Well, and it, well <laughs> it, it was. And I'll tell you what, um, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But uh, I know that it would have been fun. But here's what I want to do. Because Ken, sure. what you you and Ken are talking about it right now. When you, yeah, Kimberly knows jalapenos. Um, yeah, great. It's great. Yeah, and I, I, I think she would say the same thing. Um, yeah, ba Bill says we're making them hungry. Yeah, this see, this is good. And we don't do this. We don't do this very often. We pretty much stay on business track. But I know yeah. that this is this is real life, and you know, yeah. and we're here and we're hungry. Right. Right. Uh, and we want something to drink. By the way, don't don't you hate it? I, I don't you hate it for drivers that they can't just like you, you know, you're on a 6-day run and you can't kick back like, you know, according to DOT and all that stuff, you know? Can't really relax. Isn't that a bummer? Yeah, it's a bummer. That is a bummer. Yeah, I think about are, that sometimes. What are we going to do now? So what we're going to do now is you guys are going to talk some more about, I saw, I saw car haulers go when you were talking about Ken, when you were giving advice to car haulers, as far as techniques and way to build business, this is what Ty talks about all the time. And you can confirm if you, if you said, if you already said one, if you're a car hauler and you're at an auction, put a business card under the windshield wipers of every car. Yeah, absolutely. What's advice piece number two? You know, I think so many people today have lost the... Uh, well, okay, so let me back up. So the the two guys that I work with, uh, early 30s, I'm almost pushing 50. I still got to touch, feel, and talk to people, okay? Um, touch in a good way. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but um you know i i have to be oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, yeah i said that and i was like great but <laughs> but um you know just and, and you know some guys may not be comfortable with this just go up and introduce yourself yeah and you know um and just stick it out there and say hey i'm i'm Sam with Sam's trucking and I haul cars and I'm, I want to head back toward Tulsa. You got anything? Well, Sam, I do, you know, um, but well, that, that personal. And, and, that, and so there, here's a good question in that moment, right? It's kind of mm -hmm. like being, you're on a date and you're like, you know, staring at the ground and am I going to ask her to dance? Right. What's a good way to do this? Well, uh, first of all, if, if I'm in the lane, I'm in the zone, you know, not like LeBron James, but, you know, I mean, I'm trying to focus on getting the right inventory, not paying too much, making sure the the Taurus 500 doesn't have a massive rust stop fender on the passenger side. I never looked at That's a true story. I'll tell you that another time. <laughs> you know, if if I were if I were a uh, if I were a guy looking to pick up some loads, I would really just somehow I would wear a T-shirt that says I haul freight. Stop me and ask, you know, oh. or I haul cars stop and ask, you know, and then that's a great way because I'll tell you if, if, if at that particular point in time, and I, and I, I would probably, that would something in my head to say, I gotta go find that guy that had that shirt on. It says he hauls cars. I was just going to say maybe like, okay, so like, how about we, we've talked cause Ty talks about that. What well, you don't have to wear a suit or nothing crazy. Oh gosh, no. Yeah. So you're wearing your, you got your, even like, here we go. Auto transport Intel. 
And then yeah. if on the back it said, I haul cars. Yeah. I'm Jay. Right. Whatever. Right. And plus maybe right. wear a hat that, you know, might say I'm a car hauler. Yeah. Right. And you have business yeah. cards. Is that okay? I mean, would, would people think that's weird? Am I going to get kicked out of the auction? No, I think that's, right. I think those guys are going to be totally okay with that. So the question is, how do you get into the auction? Right. Well, you know, that, that was, a, I would think, I don't know. You got the drop lot, right? So right. transporters lot. Right. So you got the drop lot uh, and you can go in there at some point, but do you have to have a gate pass to get beyond that drop lot? You do if it's Mannheim PA. Do you? <laughs> yeah. You can go really, to there's got to be a way around it's that. A, true story, right? True yeah. story. That was well, one of our first experiences. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, I mean, that's the thing is because they had a lot of theft and they were <laughs> kicking everybody out. And, you know, I mean, well, shucks. Well, then, um, what I tell guys is I say, you know, and it goes back to what Ken's saying. If, if you, you know, Ken, Ken and I, I mean, if I, if I didn't know how to get into an auction I, and Ken and I were friends, Ken, I can go with you to the auction. You can get me a guest badge, right? Yep. Right. And I can go yeah, inside the exactly. auction. So I tell guys, look, go meet a car guy. Yeah. Everybody knows a car. Everybody knows a car guy. There yeah. is no right. one who does not know a car guy. And I, right. and I talk to guys all the time. I'm like, Hey, do you know anybody who sells cars? No. Really? Well, when was the last time you bought a car? <laughs> Who'd you <laughs> buy it from? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. everybody knows a car guy. I'm sorry. It's like everybody is related to a truck driver. I mean, think about it. You know, my uncle Bill is a truck driver. Yeah. And every, everybody knows somebody. So, I tell guys, look, if you, if you can't get in the back gate, and different auctions are different. I mean, Kansas City, I've been up here so long, everybody knows me. But it, you're exactly right. You can go in the back gate, blend in, don't don't be a jerk, be respectful. Right. You know, I'm here. If, I, if you're not supposed to be here, somebody will tell you and just leave. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and I've, I've told a lot of guys, call the auction, tell them you're a transport guy and you want to come to the auction, hang out with one of your dealers. What do you need? Yeah. And they'll tell them. So um, one of the things, Ken, like <clears throat> you and I talk a lot, we talk a lot about rates and different things like that. So mm -hmm. on your end, from the dealer perspective, tell us, you know, some of the considerations you have when you're talking about trying to negotiate a rate. Because the guys I talk to are always so scared to death. How do I make a rate? What is a rate? Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, uh, and I'll leave all this, you know, totally um, uh, confidential. But I had a, a, an unfortunate experience. Um, so really, I don't, this sounds bad. I, I don't care what I pay to get a car out of the auction to me, um, but I do. I want to get it out quickly because things can happen. The longer a vehicle sits at the auction yard, the greater potential of some type of vandalism um, or something like that can take place. So when I, you know, want to get something moved, I do take the rate in consideration, but I want, I want the service more than anything, because in this one scenario, um, that cost me about $5,000. So it's pretty insignificant. The, the rate is pretty insignificant compared to the liability. Right. So from, and this is what I try to explain to guys. So when you buy a car, you want it at home. Why? Well, first of all, cause the clock's ticking, you know? Oh, okay. Let's stop right there. Let's talk about yeah. that clock. What is it? Sure. So once that check hits, the bank the bank fees are already starting. You know, your interest is accumulating. You you've already you know that car when it gets here has got to go out to the PDR guy. Um, you're already making a schedule to get it in there because time is money and you want to turn it really quick. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to wait a week or two to get one down. Secondly. Let's say you buy it online and you don't have an opportunity to look at it prior to the purchase and you do um, a post-sale inspection. You pay for a seven day and you don't get the, the car for 10 days. Well, you just wasted the money on your seven day post-sale inspection. And then guess what? It's got a, it's got a bad rear end. It. Right. So here's, here's the, here's the way to take when I'm coaching these guys, when a, when a dealer buys a car, he wants it home for a reason. The clock is mm -hmm. ticking. So it's a yep. money money game and and the guy buys a car and he asks you when will you get it home when will it be here he's not asking because he's just doesn't have anything to do 
He's asking because that car is going certain places once it gets to your lot when yes. you said PDR. So explain to the audience exactly what is PDR. Well, PDR is paintless dent repair. Um, so, you know, right now we have some trucks that are going to come down from Kansas City. And, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is get them first into the guys to do the work that needs to be done. Pull and, you know, pull some dents out. So then that way it can go on to detail. Once it gets detailed, it looks pretty, it's shiny, it's on the website now, and it's ready for sale. So when you're calling and saying, hey, Ty, where's my car? It, it's not so much you're, you're upset with me or you've got any kind of issue with me. It's you, you've got a plan and a time schedule and, and you've got guys waiting on it. Yeah. So that's what I try to tell these guys. If, if I tell you the cars will be there at three, my goal is to get them there by one. Right? Yeah, right always work that way but i understand you've got things that you have to get done with that car because ultimately at the end of the day you want it on the lot so somebody can buy that's absolutely right you know the interest clock is ticking you know yeah. Only just so wealthy that you don't have to borrow money to buy the cars um but if you're wealthy enough to do that surely to god you'd be on a beach having my ties or doing <laughs> used car business you know what i mean um, maybe some, maybe open up a trucking company. <laughs> oh, doesn't that sound stellar? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, is it now? And that, by the way, once you've made that, you shaken hands, you get the deal. Being losing communication, not being on time, is a great way to make that whole deal. Just, I mean, right? You're not. Oh, you, where's yeah. where are you, driver? Right. Nothing. And, and it's, and it's, like, in today's that. world, we are so connected that, you know, and people are now going to text as, as like the phone call of the say text. Yes. You know, uh, just a quick text, be there to, you know, whatever, you know, and that's huge. You know, I was, I was just reading an article about how dealerships, it, the question was, why don't more dealerships service departments use text to their advantage when updating a customer because it by text more people are more likely to respond quickly and and, and actually respond if you send an right. email or leave a voicemail it's whatever but text right. that's the way to go you know and and i don't mind text uh but again i'm i'm the guy that's got a touchy feely you know how you doing look at your body language um but Text is a very easy way to communicate without causing uh, concern for that other person because they can respond on their timeline and everything else. Um, but it, it's amazing to me how people do communicate today. I never talked to a lady uh, ever. We texted a million times on Saturday and she shows up Monday and buys a car, you know? Wow. And I'm like, we, you know, it, I never met her. You know, can I would, you it, it, now are we talking because you know what popped in my head? Millennial, right? Like, right? But, yeah, but you know what? I think she was actually like mid 40s. Okay, so she just she's like, Where were yeah. you? I'm I've yeah. already swiped right three times. I got a car, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, I and I think you know, any carrier out there, you know, it's just communication is just the key. I mean, and that's the key to anything in your marriage, in your business, you know, communication is key. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, what I try to tell you guys is get ahead of the, get ahead of the dealer. And that's, that's really the main, the name of the game on my end is if I, if I know Ken's probably wondering where that car is at or truck's at, I, I should go ahead and let Ken know it's not there yet. Exactly. And, Text, get it. I like that. Get ahead of the dealer. Just like I say to the driver when I was a dispatcher, all right, I still talk like a dispatcher, right? I have nightmares. Okay. And I say to the driver, listen, man, it's, it, it, we just, we just got bad news. We need to tell the broker. Okay. We need to either call the customer, tell the broker or, you know, just lie like crazy. But at one is we got to do something. We have to formulate a plan. We can't just, ah, well, you know, Maybe. Pretend you didn't see the text. <laughs> right. Nine phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna do the maybe, you know. Yeah. 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 You says, know. Don't do that. Don't do the maybe. You know, I just thought of something else uh, for your for some of your drivers to to consider. You know, it's getting hot. Even though here in Northeast Oklahoma it's very pleasant tonight, I don't know what's going on with the weather, but 
last week when I was at Mannheim and I was walking out of the building, it was stinking hot. I was tired. And if there was a guy standing at the door with a cooler full of water, just handing out bottles of water with the name on it, I guarantee you he would pay for that case of water in about 22 seconds. You know, it just, you know, any kind of anything to engage. That, well, that, that'll be number three, because I was going to say to Ty, because he talks about bringing donuts. And that is a yeah. really great idea to have a have something as a way to engage, because that's the that's the hard part, isn't it? How yeah. do you find that right moment to say something? Well, yeah, and that again, probably when when the lanes are running and everything's going on, that's probably not the best time. So you want to be more of a um, stealth type presence. Uh, but when when that's over and you got to get out there, man, put the pursuit hat on and and shake the trees, make it happen. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> right. And that's really awesome, Ken. It yeah. really is. It makes me feel real good. I know. I'm, I'm thinking a lot, and I'll tell you what, I'm. I, I, that's the kind of, you know, it's cool that you were saying things that Ty has been saying, and so it's really, it's neat. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there's somebody watching right now going, wow, Ty said it before, and then Ken just said it just now. It's great, man. Really yeah. appreciate it. Real yeah. people. And I got to meet Adam and Sean, uh, Sean right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, and that and that's another thing. It's like, I, I mean, you know, Jeff Bass is on the show. He's a, one of the guys I coached Ken down in Florida, and, and he and I stay in touch. And, and what he's doing down there is amazing. But if he if he were to come on here, he knows his customer. He knows what his customer is doing. He's at their shop. He's helping, you know, sweeping the garage out, helping the guys, whatever it is. And I tell right. you guys, I think it's stupid. But Ken, what was I doing the other day? He actually was sweeping. I couldn't figure that one out, but I, God bless you. you did it. <laughs> I was helping out and clean up the garage. And yeah. It was good. Hey, yeah. there's tip number four. If you can do something to help somebody out, do it. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? It doesn't have – okay, so it doesn't have to be change somebody's tire, you know, but if, if you see somebody's gas cap's off, say, hey, man, your gas cap's off, you know, just little things. Yeah. It is cool. Yeah. We all we all walk around with blinders on 99% of the time. So that little nudge of like, hey, did you notice your flies undone? No, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> Feels awkward, but who wouldn't want to know that? <laughs> be happy to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I not awkward. only notify people of their flies, but I do move cars. Here's my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I'm a big communicator. So there we go. That's actually pretty funny. Yeah, it is pretty funny, man. That could be somebody's logo. Yeah. You know, um, I, I'm going to say this. Not only do I thank you for being here tonight, but um, and thanks for being flexible on the scheduling. Yeah. But oh, yeah, no we, problem. We definitely would love to have you back sometime. Man, I, um, you, anytime you want me on, I'm on. Really? I mean, I still got my old freight veins. I mean, I got a little diesel diesel coursing through my veins. I mean, I, you know, I, I sympathize. I know what these guys are going through. It's not fun pulling over, eating at at the world's largest steak, and taking showers in the public showers. I get it, but you know, they're hardworking guys, and and I, you know, I, I understand. I mean, freight's not whether it be general commodity freight or hauling cars. It's all this, you know, it's the same. You got a service to perform. Um, and oh, I just thought of another thing somewhere else. Can't, can't. Mm -hmm. On your lot, how many vehicles do you like to keep in your inventory? About, um, I, I would love to have sixty at all times. All right. Okay. So, about how many do you usually sell a month? Ballpark. Uh, we're hitting about twenty-one, twenty-two right now. Right. So I'm telling guys, this is what I call residual income. Ken sold twenty, twenty-one, twenty-five cars last month. Ken's new goal this month is to sell 26. Yes. Is that right? Yep. So I tell these guys this, I say, look, this guy's not here just for fun and games. I mean, this is his life. This is how he mm -hmm. makes money. This guy puts food on the table. You help this guy and then you've got a, a friend for life, a customer for life, and you're going to be doing business every month because that's what Ken does every month. He sells cars. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> I think any of your guys – and, and, and communication is key. Communication is absolutely a must. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's no, awesome. Well, thanks, Ken. Yeah, that, cool. that that really is awesome. Your feedback was awesome, and having you on the show is really fun. I'm looking forward to having you back. Do this. Yeah. Um, I know you're in touch with Ty all the time, but if there's some kind of a benchmark, milestone, new announcement, or something you want to talk about, man, you're welcome here anytime. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, I'll keep you guys kind of informed of what happens here with Car Guru. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm kind of hoping maybe they you know, uh, come to their census and say, Hey, you know, yes, we want to be the biggest and the baddest on the block, but we can't get there by, you know, having a business model that we currently have today. And, you know, maybe the reality is they say, let's raise it up. We lose three guys, big deal because we made more revenue and we, we don't have as many guys to service now with the, with the remaining pool. I don't know. Yeah. You're right. That's always (laughs) That's kind of counterproductive in my mind. Well, obviously, there's part of a business model that we just don't know, and I think I think we've all been very fair in our discussion about it. So, you know, again, it's good to this is a business show. We want to help uh, people improve their businesses, and if we've got to look upward in the chain about you know feedback of a business model, there, so be it. Let's do it. No doubt. Cool. Cool. Well, thank I, you guys. Thank I enjoyed you so this. Much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Keep in touch, Ty. You're sticking around with me. Um, Ken, I'm gonna let you go. I'm okay. going to run an ad right now for the DOT guy. Stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. All right. Bye bye. Don't, don't wait, wait until, until it's too late, late to get, to get FMCSA, FMCSA DOT, DOT compliant. compliant. You need you to need take, take care of that right away. The best way to do that is to go visit my friend Brian Riker at Fleet Compliance Solutions. Now, you can go to Fleet Compliance Solutions, LLC, or you can also visit him at yourdotguy.com. And here he's got services to help you out, whether you're a single owner operator or a fleet. You can contact him and ask him for, you can get USDOT compliant, applying for your authority right off, or if you're going to be audited, you're going to need help. And he helps you make sure that you navigate the DOT and be fully compliant when you're uh, going through your safety audit. Also, he can help out with safety training, coaching, OSHA, environmental concerns, help you protect your CDL. You can visit him and his staff. Go to fleetcompliancesolutions.net or yourdotguy.com. Talk to Brian. If you need an expert witness, if you're going to end up in court over a problem, you're going to need some help, and he can help represent you. There are links here. Find out more about Fleet Compliance Solutions. And also, he's got articles and information. If you've got specific questions, you can contact him at 570-228-6210. And I highly encourage you to visit Fleet Compliance Solutions, LLC, yourdotguy.com. Tell him ATI sent you. Brian is a friend of the show. Thanks. All right, cool. So, hey guys, I now have it. Oh, here, let me get this stuff off the screen. We had, we just had Ken uh, from C4 Auto Group, and now we are being joined by mm. Trevor Smith and Blake from Atomic Six. I'm gonna get your uh, screen names up here. Please say hello, Trevor and Blake. Can you hear us? Okay. Hey man, how's it going? How you doing? Good, awesome. All right, so we've got we got good audio there. Now let's just yeah. jump right in, guys. What's Atomic Six? <laughs> uh, I'll take that one. Uh, carbon fiber. So we want to manufacture carbon fiber parts, and for purposes of this conversation, auto haulers, uh, tra- trailers. Okay, so you are now. Why are you doing that? What's so important about that? Tell me more. I mean. I know, but let tell tell our folks why why what's the point? Why do that? Because I love this hat from Peach State Truckers. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. And I hey, me and Ty have the same hat because I know. <laughs> we we got to meet each other at Auto Haulers Association of America. Here's the plug. We were at the Auto Haulers Association of America Spring Conference in Atlanta and we met while skeet shooting. The gun range, yeah. yeah you were pretty good. Range. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Dave Miser, I forget his last name, but Dave gave us all the hats. So yep. um, I have his card right here. I think it's Mizerski, Mizrowski. <laughs> what to send this from? Peach yeah. State Carriers. <laughs> I, oh I no way! 
Oh. Oh, oh he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it was only appropriate to have the trucker hat on during trucker conversation. I did what? <laughs> oh, no, Jay's getting hit. <laughs> oh, he's got one too? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Blake. We should, have, we should have got you one, buddy. We should have said Blake. One. Blake. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the, what's the latest on the carbon fiber, man? Uh, well, I don't know if you guys saw. It's uh, it's coming out more and more mainstream. So last week or two weeks ago, I sent actually I sent the article to Jay, but GMC just re- announced a release. They're doing their Sierra, Sierra truck. They're doing a carbon fiber composite truck bed. So you're seeing more and more uh, carbon composite get into the mainstream, but we'll talk about it in a second. Cool. Sorry, Jay. I jumped in. Go ahead. I'm glad you did. Thanks for taking over. See, I knew that. We got <laughs> we're like Starsky and Hutch. It's the double helix, man. That's right. So, oh uh, yeah, man. This is pretty. This is a first, by the way. We've never had three out of four people wearing the same hat <laughs> oh, live man. on this show. This is an absolute first. You've got to charge these guys for whatever. <laughs> Dude, hey, get Dave on the phone tomorrow. We need. <laughs> We need to let him know that at an hour and a half, he's going to say, well, how long is your show? At, at, at an hour and 40 minutes, I've, I'm looking for his card right here. These are my, um, this is my <laughs> stack of cards from the Auto Haulers Association. And I'm going to pull his card up here. Uh, he might be in the, I have a couple stacks. Did you guys end up with a stack of cards? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I got man. a stack, and I knew I, I knew zero people going into that meeting, and everyone was so nice and kind, and um, just really excited to hear that there may be a change to the industry after what I don't know, 40, 50 years. Uh, just some new technology besides the apps that you guys talk about a lot, but uh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> Dave, I found his card. I got it right here. So we need to let him know because he was on our list, Ty. Mm-hmm. You know what's cool is after auto haulers, man, we made we met so many people. You did too, right? Oh, that was amazing. I'm telling you right now, here's another plug. Auto Haulers Association of America. Yeah. Um, they got a great thing going. And I I, I, I talked to Guy. I want to help them spread the message. Well, and I'll make a quick plug. Um, I wouldn't have known about any of it had it not been for Matt Allard or Allard. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but he's in London with uh, Future Vehicle Logistics. Oh, they're, yeah. uh, they're a media group. Yeah. So uh, props to him for connecting me to all you guys. You know, now is Matt part, is he with FVL or Automotive Logistics? Do you know? Because I don't I, know the difference. We talked to a guy named Christopher in London, and I wonder if he works with Matt. I think- I think they work together. Yeah. I would love to talk to Matt also. In fact, maybe maybe Matt's the one that Christopher was saying we should talk to. Yeah. Don't they you love this big, man? Uh, Networking award. is the best, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's what it's all about, man. They just did a big um award show in Vegas for all the um um truckers, like the the guys who, you know, haul the cars around, the the in yeah, you know, the reason we're all here. That's actually yeah, exactly, right? And that's important. You know, it is. That's actually one one of the reasons I do industry news is because this is boots on the ground. This is what drivers are seeing. Not yeah. only the traffic, but the accidents, the truck stops, the crazy signage, the ELDs and the apps that go haywire. It's nonstop. Gate passes, uh, inspection documents. They got to send their invoice. They're, it's four fifty nine, and the, the place is about to close, and somebody's on the phone saying, "Where's my invoice? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I got to get out of here. I got thirty seconds." <clears throat> so let's no. hear about carbon fiber, man. Absolutely. Oh yes, that's right. So yeah, okay. So carbon fiber. Now, all right. So you you were explaining to me that. Oh yeah. By the way, so carbon fiber composite because if you make trailers lighter. Yeah then you can carry more cars. Uh, so I, I learned this terminology during AHA, cubing out versus weighing out. And so one of the reasons that this is a topic is guys are weighing out before they're cubing out. So if we had a trailer that let's just say weighed 4,000 pounds less, maybe 30% of the time, they could haul one more car for free. Essentially, it's free money. If we had a trailer that was that much less, so they hit that 80,000 pound max limit by cubing out instead of weighing out. So I think that's really why we're here. 
So tell me, help the audience, in case anybody doesn't know, cubing out versus weighing out. The, what are the definitions there? Oh, <laughs> I'll be happy to give you uh, the definition. So weighing out, meaning if you have a full trailer, uh, well, not the full, actually the trailer's not full, but you're hitting that 80,000 pound road limit. If I'm saying this right, Ty, if I'm saying it wrong, Ty, please interject. But um, if you hit that 80,000 pound limit, but maybe there's uh, an open spot on the trailer where you could put one or maybe two more cars uh, because you have something heavy like a Tesla Model X because cars are getting heavier because of the EV piece and, and Ford and GM are only doing the trucks and sedans are getting rid of the, the lighter cars. So maybe you're hitting that 80,000 pound limit before you cube out, meaning you could put 10 or 11 vehicles on that trailer, however many you have space for uh, before you hit that, that weight capacity. So if you're hitting that weight capacity before you're hitting your cube capacity or your vehicle capacity, that's why we're here and that's the conversation we wanna have tonight. So here's a question, um, Colin asks, he's in the live chat, he says, what parts of the trailer would be carbon fiber composite? What that's parts a, of the trailer? That's a really great question. <laughs> also, why, also why Blake is on the line. Um, but I think after having a few conversations with people at AHA, you know, we, we can make the whole thing carbon fiber. We, it, 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 take the steel, take the aluminum. It could all be carbon fiber, that, but that's not the most cost-effective way to do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're weighing out, but you, you only have room for like one more car, the, the, the best value for the money is that next like 4,000 pounds? Because you can put one more car on, you've cubed out, and you're still under that 80,000 pound limit. Do you, you follow me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so we don't necessarily need to make the whole trailer carbon fiber. We need to make the trailer parts carbon fiber and get that weight advantage while also making parts of that trailer uh, carbon fiber like towards the bottom where you get a lot of rust. And we'll get into this later, but carbon fiber is anti-corrosive, so we can we can lower a lot of those maintenance costs that a lot of these uh, truckers are seeing. So, to answer his question, parts that have to be moved a lot, maybe the the flippers at the end of the trailer, where the trucks are, the truckers are like, you know, manually moving that flipper at the end, or anything uh, that has to be moved a lot, anything at the base that's going to see a lot of salt, um, any structural component really that um, you know takes a lot of weight. And then those aluminum parts. Yeah, you have your hand raised, Todd. Well, I figured out that's my new way to get in. Um, yeah. Here's a question. You know, on these car hauler trailers, the, the main supports are on the outside, those. Yeah. Um, are you saying that this carbon fiber is the equivalent or better than the steel that's currently used? Blake, hop in here. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so I'm, nothing's really changed in, in steel and aluminum for, for quite a while. So the engineered materials are, are the future of, of all engineering. Um, so you're looking at uh, your steels. It's got something like a 35,000 pound PSI tensile strength limit. That's the limit before it starts to break uh, or, or yield or become uh, unusable for the truck. Uh, in carbon fiber, you're more on the scale of 600,000 to 700,000, 800,000 uh, PSI. So you're in a totally different ballpark as far as strength goes. Uh, much less weight, much less material required to do the same work. Um, so yeah, absolutely. In engineering materials are the future of, of a lot of a lot of industries. Well, the car hauling, here's it, Blake, for you. Here, here's what we know about car haulers. Uh, it's probably been, what, maybe the last five years that we finally got rid of chains and went to straps. Mm -hmm. That was the big move. That was the yeah, big move. That was huge. Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> yeah. And then to come find out, I, I was uh, did that interview with Dave Del Gellinger uh, worldwide, and he was saying that actually the straps weigh more, which I thought that was interesting. <laughs> but yeah. either way, part would be is so basically your your pushback would be from trailer manufacturers that maybe aren't that comfortable with carbon fiber. Is that maybe your pushback? Usually, um, most people have a, the impression that, that uh, composite material in general is just very brittle. It's, it's very strong, but it's brittle. So, I mean, what's gonna happen when I curb the, 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 the car or when I hit this beam on, on, a, on the gravel or we get salt spray or another car runs into me, what's, what's gonna happen? Um, 
there's a lot of things that can happen. And that's actually something because it's an engineered material, we can vary uh, the amount of fiber versus the amount of resin. We can make any kind of performance version that you guys want. So, well, uh, a lot of these car holder, the stingers that, that lower support deck or support steel on both sides of the trailer, what cool. we call curb. So these guys will not some, you know, it's definitely most of the time, not intentional, but they'll be taking a corner and, <clears throat> in a location they're not familiar with. Next thing you know, they're they're wrapping that thing up against a big concrete pole. And you got this, you know, your steel usually goes straight, yep. but now it goes like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying the carbon fiber can bend too? So carbon's not, it's not gonna bend. Um, so you, typically in a carbon application, we're gonna over-design. Uh, it's gonna take way more to create a failure in the carbon than it would be in your steel and your aluminum. You bend a, an aluminum or a steel piece, you're still gonna have to replace it um you might be able to drive it with the rear end hanging off the side like that but uh, uh it's still a it's still a dead part uh, with so the what carbon. happens to the carbon fiber so um it would be yeah, yeah. for for there, there's several things to focus on you've got your surface that's making contact with whatever's whatever's making the impact so we're, we're going to want to coat it you're not going to have i think in an auto hauler application most industrial applications you're not going to get that nice pretty woven beautiful carbon fiber look on the outside uh, it's just not utility. Uh, we're going to want to protect it. So we're going to want to coat it with something that can take the abuse. Uh, but in carbon fiber, when it does break, um, it you typically laminates first. Um, so you're going to know it broke. Um, it's not going to be functional uh, beyond that. Hey, Blake, it, describe what delamination is. Just so you know. delamination uh, composite is made in layers. Um, so if you think about uh, where the carbon gets its strength from, uh, it's basically a bunch of strings. So string is really strong in tension, but no other direction. Um, so we've got to put those strings in a bunch of different directions to create a orthotropic or have strength in all the directions that you're gonna load it. Um, so those different layers of different direction fibers, the only thing holding them together is the resin that you use to bond the whole thing together. So those, those layers can come apart um, in, in failure. That's, that's typically the main failure, which creates a lot of noise. It creates a lot of obvious uh, things um, you can see usually very visible obvious that you've had a delamination um, but so we can we do we have we have to consider how how's failure going to happen and what failure is acceptable so you curb it do I need to be able to drive the next 10 miles to a place where I can park the trailer to, to have it fixed or replaced or get all the cars off um, that's something that we have to take into consideration with the engineering side for redundancy for strength um, but the other big argument against carbon, uh, and I think somebody reported out in the chat, is uh, cost. Uh, carbon is expensive. Uh, it's been on airplanes and space program for a long time. But why? Which is why Trevor and I are here. Um, typically, yeah. the, the cost is in processing. Um, the raw materials themselves, they are expensive, but they're not really that much more expensive than the raw materials and, and your more exotic aluminums. Um, it's, it's the processing time, the tools are required to actually produce it. All that technology is time consuming, it's slow, it's not very high volume, and it's expensive. Uh, but the work that I've done in composite, and the reason why Trevor and I are trying to start this new uh, venture with Atomic 6 is uh, I've got a way to produce it really fast, really cheap, and at really high volume, really high quality. So that's having the availability of parts to service your trailer is going to be crucial to maintaining a fleet or maintaining a truck. Uh, so let's make that a little more tangible just so people understand because carbon fiber, you know, it's been around in 50, 60 years. Uh, it's, it's used again in, in applications where it's, it's very exotic, you know, your, your high end cars, your, your rockets. But if we can bring that manufacturing process and the cost down, we can apply it to a lot more things where increasing payload capability really starts to add to a truck driver's bottom line. So this process that we have is, is pretty incredible uh, when compared to your, your historical ways of producing carbon structural components. And I wanna let Blake talk about that real quick. Yeah. Um... So, and I saw another question, Kevlar and the components, uh, Formula One, which I know Trevor's been up at a Formula race recently. Uh, the nose oh, cones yeah. on the Formula One race car are a basically accordion-shaped carbon fiber funnel. 
Um, and they do wrap the outside with Kevlar because it's more elastic. It actually acts as a web so that what they do hit the wall, you're not just spraying shards of glass everywhere. Um, and a similar thing would be done, I think, in an auto hauler or any other industrial application. Um, it's just another layer on the outside as a, because it's engineered material, we can put anything we want in it. We can layer things within it. We can layer things around the outside of it uh, to give it the additional properties that make it more versatile for whatever application. Uh, so, so, so why Blake is our process um, exponentially better than what's currently available in the market? Just say someone trying to make a, a carbon fiber part out of an autoclave, or, which is the, the, typical process that you would use for making something that's very structural, like a beam and an, an 18 with it. Yeah. So the, the process that um, I've worked on the last couple of years, it's not, um, it's not specific to the raw material. So it can be Kevlar, it can be carbon, it can be um, e-glass or fiberglass. Um, it's, it's, it's bringing down the cycle time. Um, you're normally looking at cycle times traditionally, uh, especially in the aerospace world, they're using uh, like pre-impregnated materials. Those are running on the, on the order of like 17 to 27 hours curing. Uh, and typically they're only making one part at a time. Uh, that's never going to be fr uh, fruitful for big production. Um, newer processes, newer chemicals, newer versions of the materials have gotten the speeds much lower. Um, but in, in my work, I was able to get under 30 minutes and I could make very large quantities uh, with low cost tooling uh, of parts. So it, it makes it much more, we've left the realm of the, of the high end aerospace, the only high end auto option to what can we, uh, what in the commoditized market can we replace uh, with an engineering what, material? What do you guys, what do you, what do you really need? Do you need a, somebody that either has a trailer or do you need a trailer manufacturing company to let you guys play in their playground a little bit? Yeah, so our customer would be uh, a trailer manufacturer, someone who assembles the trailer and puts all the parts together and then sells it to the, you know, like a Jack Cooper or someone who's hauling the cars around. So our customer would be, you know, like a Cottrell or Lore or, you know, insert any one of the, the bigger OEMs that manufacture those pieces. Um, and then hopefully our technology will go downstream to your viewership and increase their bottom line. So when we can take weight off these trailers and lower the maintenance costs and increase the, uh, the value of that trailer over the life of the, 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 the usable life of that trailer, uh, the, your, your truckers are gonna, your truck drivers are going to make more money every year. Yeah. And I have an example of that later. We can get to it, but, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're headed. Yeah. The uh, manufacturers, we, we're already trying to, to tag these guys down, but uh, they care more about the guys buying the trucks. So um, if we can attack this on both fronts, uh, build some comfort on the customer side, it'll be a lot easier for them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was, I was thinking, you know, there's there's always these car haulers out here. We call them super truckers or whatever. You, you know, they, they've got these pimped out trucks. And I thought, okay, let's start with the flipper, you know? Yeah, yeah. Those, those things weigh what 50 to 80 pound one flipper depends on what size it is okay let's take two off there we saved 160 pounds yeah but i mean guys would probably pay money for that so if i pulled into your shop and said hey i want some flippers can you make them yeah so that's a great question and i'll talk about kind of where we are right now as a company we are what you would call in the prototype phase and we are identifying certain parts in the trailer just just to show proof of concept and to show, hey, we can make it at a certain cost. So we, and Jay, you've got some pictures uh, up on the screen that I sent you earlier, but. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so we toured. You been? Uh, do what? I said, hey, Jay, where you been? Yeah, hey, Jay. well, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about all this trailer stuff. I was, I was thinking, uh, what about ramps? Would that yeah, also so ramps be are a big part of it. Yeah, so, I mean, because you got to move that by hand. So anything that we can make lightweight, especially if we can become cost competitive, with aluminum parts, it's kind of a no-brainer because just as a general rule of thumb, aluminum versus a carbon fiber, you know, composite mm -hmm. product, we're going to be a third less of the weight. If you're comparing that to steel, we're going to be two thirds less of the weight. So the pictures I sent you, um, the the folks at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, I'm not sure if you know who that is, but it's the largest government funded carbon fiber research facility in the country. It's just outside of Knoxville. Uh, there you go. You have a picture of 
the sign at the uh, the composites lab at University of Tennessee. So UT and Oak Ridge National Laboratory have kind of partnered up and are doing a ton of research in next generation materials and whatnot. So they knew who they, they were aware of Blake and I, I called them up. We got an invite. We toured their facility and said, look, guys, here's what we want to do. We, we want to really bring this into mainstream trucking. We think trucking is a really great application for it. So they said, let's use our resources. So the Department of Energy is, is very interested in lowering, you know, the, the, the fuel consumption, the energy consumption, if you will, of trucking. So if we, and especially uh, the, the energy consumption of new materials. So like Blake was talking about lowering the time in the autoclave from 17 hours to 30 minutes, you know how much energy it takes to power up an autoclave? It's a lot. So if we can lower that time exponentially, the Department of Energy is very interested in that. So the, the Department of Energy backs Oak Ridge National Laboratory and then the University of Tennessee, and you can scroll through a couple of those pictures, Jay. Um, oh. The University of Tennessee has a composites lab that we toured. At, that's the autoclave. So that's that's kind of that's a really small one that we've been talking about, but it's basically a pressurized cylinder where uh, heat and pressure go in, and, and you get rid of all the air in that uh, carbon fiber mold, if you will. And Blake, interject anywhere because I'm not the engineer here, but that's a part in the composites lab. So uh, University of Tennessee has said, "Look, guys, we know you're in the prototype phase. We like what you're doing." use our facility use let, let us help you out so let's come back to that weight saving yeah. scale oh here's part of the lab there's uh that's actually the the new expansion that's a brand new part of the lab that uh they're putting new um uh machinery in there but basically ut said we'll build your prototypes oak ridge said we will help you potentially with some government funding but really third-party testing so if we do end up doing a deal with some of these auto hauler OEMs, they're not just they're not just getting a stamp from Atomic Six. They're getting a stamp from a university. They're getting a stamp from the US government saying, this is a really great product and we can stand behind it. And we really want to see this implemented in in the trucking industry. So answer your question, we're in the prototype phase. We're looking at certain parts just to, to make a proof of concept. Oh, that right there, that's actually the battery um, holder for a Chevy Bolt. It's made out of carbon composite. It's a. It's actually not a weave. That's a chopped carbon, and they they pressed it into a mold, and it, it holds a battery for the Chevy Volt. I just thought it was a pretty cool uh, picture, but they made that there at IHACME is how you pronounce that. But that's the the governing body between Oak Ridge and the University of Tennessee. Hmm. So, well, okay. here's a, here's some of the things like I like I hear what you're saying, and I think it's great, but. You know, you, I know some of these guys that, at these trailer manufacturing places and <clears throat> they're all busy trying to kick out a bunch of trucks and trailers, right? So I'm wondering if maybe the aftermarket might be a better start to get their attention. It, it, could, it could be. Um, we're somewhat new to the industry and that, and that may be a great avenue. We're, we're trying to pursue all of them. We're trying to pursue, you know, getting interest from the OEM. We're trying to pursue getting interest from the end consumer being the trucker, you guys, what, your viewers. And what kind well, of, sorry to interrupt you, but what kind of federal uh, oversights are you guys having to, uh, is oversight the right word? Standard? Do you federal you know, regulation? regulations? Yeah, to, to say, okay, this, this thing's good. If we so approve. Blake can speak to this, but from a trailer perspective versus a tractor perspective, if you put a part on a trailer, it doesn't necessarily have to be federally regulated. I think it's just regulated by the OEM. And then if you put a part on a tractor, you've got to crash test it, that type of thing. Like, did I say that right? Yeah, well, most of the stuff in the U.S., we're um, we're a industry governing body instead of uh, government governing. So in the, in the U.K. and uh, in Europe, you've got TUV, which is a government regulation. In the U.S., we've got SAE, so Society of American Engineers. Um, that I'm a part of, and a lot of the, all the auto brands, everybody's got to say in that. So, yeah. Uh, say, it's, yeah. yeah, it's an industry agreement. So all the auto holo brands or all the X component of auto component brand companies all come together. They send their engineers. We all have to agree, take some time to come up with a new standard because none of us want to agree with each other. Um, but we have to agree on safety standards. We have to test the hell out of it. And, and there usually is some government involvement. Um, 
to just say, yes, we, we like what you guys are, have come up with. We agree that that, that would be safe for the road. Um, and that's how things get standardized for road safety. Well, you know, another thing too, you, you said something I thought, holy smoke, if you guys can solve the, the rust problem, and do you, do you guys even know what slip plate is? I, I don't. Okay, slip plate, if you got a car hauler, it's real important that you slip plate your rails. What that is, it's some kind of graphite something, and it's nasty. You got to put it on with a brush or put a glove on and, and wipe oh, it we've, we've seen that, Blake. Is that where the metal kind of rubs against each other and they, they coat it and have to recoat it? Yeah, yeah, and it's a, it's a constant, and you got to really watch out for it. So if you're in the north where there's a lot of salt, a lot of weather, you're going to get rust, and you got to really make sure you put this stuff on there. It's going to be a problem later. And so I was sitting here thinking, holy smoke, if you fix that problem, you just won the whole game. <laughs> just that right there? Nobody likes to slip plate. Nobody. I think we can address that through some sort of resin application. If, if... Well, because see what it is. So you got a, point. a square tube that's got a bunch of holes in it yep. for pin, right? So yep. then a, it's got a, a tube that goes over that tube that slides the whole deck up and down, right? Yeah. And that's where everybody's always in those things rust out and pins break all the time. It's a mess. Yeah. If you can fix that. And, and, and by the way, silver mint says, what about auto parts? You know, talking about other, you know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I, Right. But I, well, that's probably a tougher nut to crack, but as far as a trailer, when you're yeah. dealing with the amount of weight you're putting on the trailer, this is where you're realizing the benefits of you got superior strength and the ability to cut down on the weight of the actual carrier, yeah. right? Because that is, I wanted to say this on Tesla, because I've been asking this question. I've heard that in general, maybe not the Model 3, but the Model X weighs more than an average vehicle of its type is that right because of the batteries yeah on the high side it's a little over 5500 pounds with the, the heaviest one so if you you know you've got a trailer and a tractor that's 42,000 pounds combined i mean you can only fit i think forget the math i think it was like five or six it was like you basically you have two empty spots on on your on your trailer because you've weighed out before you cubed out i was just gonna say you've weighed out before yeah. you cubed out exactly. i'm learning the lingo baby no I, I, I'm, I'm learning it you're teaching me you know so i mean it's intuitive but i wanted to make sure and that's just a sedan the model x is well it's a it's like a small suv fair yeah i mean yeah, you should be able to fit another two of these Oh yeah, maxed out on weight. Yep. Okay. So I mean, that's a real application, especially like you said, you're gonna work. You know, we're all moving towards. I mean, here's the thing: is driverless, autonomous, electric. I don't know. We don't. We don't know exactly what'll happen when, but we do know it's coming, and people are not gonna stop working on it. Well, you'll still need a trailer to move those cars around, no matter if it's robots driving it or if it's people driving it. You still need some sure. sort of infrastructure to move those vehicles around. And if yep. our weight limits are what they are, you, you're going to need a lighter vehicle. That'll be the episode of Futurama. Hey, robot, pull around back. We're going <laughs> to inspect your trailer. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. so I, I, I think, uh, I don't know how much time we have left, but. No, that... you're fine. Keep going. Now we're good. We're going to, I was thinking about this because I was, you know, we did the hats and then the, all the funny <laughs> business. So, no, let's go another 10 minutes or so. Um, so we, you have that weight savings calculator. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pull that up. Hopefully the lovely people from Hendrickson won't mind me, um, plugging their website. Hopefully it's their Oh calculator. yeah. I'm sure they're going to hate it. Like, ah, oh, man, another plug. All right. Yeah. Let's see here. Let's go share this. And this is the screenshot that you, I'm going to pull up, right? The one that you sent me. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So this is, and this is for freight trucks and I'll, I'll get to how this applies to auto haulers, but I wanted to show you big picture, big number, holy cow, this technology could really change a company or even at the individual level could change their life. Like you're, you're, you're changing a driver's annual income dramatically. So let me walk you through this. This is on the Hendrickson website. If you go look up Hendrickson website, uh, weight savings calculator. It's in there and you can press the load sample data button at the top. You can't press it back because it's a screenshot, but 
If you press the load sample data, it loads in the national averages for you know loads per week, number of weeks of operation, annual miles per truck. Everything that I didn't circle in yellow was loaded. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay. So at the top, if we save 6,000 pounds out of a freight truck, very doable with carbon fiber, whether we're taking out aluminum, steel, or anything else. If we pulled 6,000 pounds out of a truck or a trailer and a truck, however you want to look at it, and there are 100,000 trailers. Now, that's a that's a pretty big company to have 100,000 trailers. There are only a couple out there in the country, but I just wanted to show this from a, a conceptual number to show the crazy big number that this could hit. So using Hendrickson's numbers, if we pulled 6,000 pounds out of every trailer and there are 100,000 trailers in that fleet, if you look at the bottom, on an annual revenue generated, you're looking at 1.1 billion, with a B, dollars for that company. So on a per truck basis, that's just short of $12,000 annually. And that's on freight. It gets way better when you get into the auto hauling industry because your, your, your payload is, is even higher per capacity. I'm saying that right. But just on freight, if we had a, a company that did this over 100,000 trailers, we could save them $1.1 billion using these national assumptions. That's a, that's a pretty crazy number to think about. Amazing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's something wow. else. It takes a while to consume all of the different fields you've got here. But um, what's cool is, I mean, you are right now, you're talking to the heads of the largest fleets because right they're you know yeah. they're all about looking at the numbers and how do we save and how do we increase and and how do we gain and how somebody is you know somebody is asking themselves how are we going to haul all these electric vehicles in the future with the current yeah. equipment that we have somebody's so, asking yeah so let's take this same type of mentality and let's apply it to your your uh, viewership so uh, and 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 this is one reason why we're on this show is because we want to get feedback from the truck drivers and let's just, let's, let's vet these assumptions out. So assumption number one, you, maybe you haul a hundred thousand miles in a year, but 30% of that time you wait out before you cubed out. So let's say 30,000 miles out of the year, you potentially could have hauled one more car. Okay. So if you could haul one more car, and you had an Atomic 6 enhanced trailer, I'm gonna trademark that, uh, an Atomic 6 enhanced tra a trailer that was 4,000 pounds less or 4,500 pounds less. Let's assume you make 85 cents per mile and Ty jump in here. I don't know if that's the national average or not, but if it's 85 cents per mile in revenue per vehicle, that means that not even calculating fuel savings, that truck driver is gonna make $25,500 more annually and that's only assuming 30,000 miles a year what if you know it doubles if it hits 60,000 miles a year but what if we could add 25 grand back to each truck driver every year for doing the same work you guys talk about low rates and margins are at an all-time bottom this is free money so if we can price this right and we can be competitive why would you not want to do it well, and, and I, I want to say this, too, and I think you were just touching upon what Mark is asking in the live chat, the stats on fuel savings, even driving around empty. Yeah, it's right. um, I think if you use the same math that Hendrickson does, the fuel savings is about 10 percent of the potential. And then the rest of it is increased payload capacity. Uh, but I, we don't have the numbers yet. There's not a lot of uh, real world data on, you know auto haulers and, and where that applies because the auto hauler trailer is, is so much more steel versus a freight trailer. What if we could get you like, one, of our, get one of our fans on the show to give you a, uh, oh, sorry, were you talking Blake? <laughs> it's all right. Go ahead. Oh, I was thinking I want to get a truck and trailer in your, in Blake's hands and say, see what you can do. I'm an engineer. You don't want me driving a truck. <laughs> and, uh, I want to see you. I want to see you take 4,000 pounds off of it. If we yeah. bring you on, can you ballpark us a, an estimate? We might be able to find somebody in our group that would let you have sure. the truck for a month or so. How long do you need it? Um, 
Yeah, it'd probably be a month or so. Uh, we need to give me a couple months to be ready for it, but then, yeah, I won't need it for that long. I really think that would be something cool. I mean, seriously, I know enough guys and everybody else knows enough guys. I'm sure somebody knows somebody that's got a trailer laying around. Where do you want it? Yeah, so we're building those prototypes now and, and we would love people to volunteer to, to use some of these products to just get some real world data. Okay, so tell, we're why don't you tell Atlanta. us when you're ready, you tell Jay or me when, yeah. when you're ready and we'll, we'll find somebody, I bet we can find you a trailer and deliver it to you and let you play with. And I don't know if your if you're, um, viewership keeps track of this, but I'd love to know how many times they made a trip where they weighed out instead of cubing out. And if they weighed out, could they put one, two, or three more cars on that trailer? I'd love to see those numbers and, and we have yet to see them, but I'd love to hear more about that. Just get some feedback. That's a good point. Cause I know that again, I'm dipping in back into the dispatch nightmare and that was that I know I was finding loads where the driver was weighing out before he was cubing out. I mean, that would happen at least once a month, I would think. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's really where the value add is for this, uh, specifically for auto haulers. So if we can get some more information on how many times these guys could add one more car or more, that would be invaluable to uh, what we're trying to do. Where are you guys at? We both live in Atlanta. Okay, that's what I thought. Is that where you guys are going to do the work too? Uh, potentially, yeah. Hopefully. Okay. So yeah, you'll hopefully. let us know when you're ready? What's that? Yeah. You'll let us know when you're ready for a trailer? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we do. We want to be... You, we want you to keep us posted on what's happening. And I... Oh, you know, by the way, I like that uh, you were sharing the... Um, there was a truck bed. Tell me more... Tell us all about the article of the truck bed that was carbon fiber composite. It was like a GM truck. There was a news article. Yeah. So it's actually funny if you, if you do a little homework. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the commercial about GM when they showed the, the truck bed of a Ford versus F-150 versus the truck bed of a GMC. And they dropped a bunch of like sil um, uh, cylinder blocks into it. And it, it just knocked holes right into the aluminum and it kind of dented the steel. You, okay. So... There was actually, yeah, so there was actually a third truck in that commercial that they didn't show you. The third truck was a carbon composite truck bed, and they just didn't have the technology ready to release it. But the only reason they did that commercial was to find out how the carbon composite held up to the steel and aluminum, and it didn't even budge. You had a couple of dents in the steel. The aluminum got ripped apart, but the carbon composite, it was all good. It's crazy. That's amazing. No, it's, pretty cool. it's, it's more and more mainstream you know your electric vehicles are you know tesla would love to implement more carbon fiber into their cars i mean these electric trucks i mean you get whether it's performance oriented or you get more miles per gallon to the charge however you look at it there there are ways to benefit from this technology as long as it is cost competitive and that's what we're trying to do I, yeah. yeah i don't want to get into the recipe but I'm imagining it's a it's a mold. It's a combination of a of a mold slash manipulated surface. And so, is it like if you have larger trailer parts, then one of the challenges to create that mold, whatever that is, is that right? Because that's kind of because it's, it's a mixture you, of black magic and alchemy, and somehow Blake figured it out. Right, and so I know. Do you guys weld this stuff or do you bolt it on? So you don't, well, that's, you that's a good question. Welding. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, your, your replacement for welding is going to be an epoxy bond, um, which is going to be just as strong as, as, as you would do welding. It's going to be stronger than, um, usually it's stronger than the resin itself in the fiber. Um, so it's, it's going to be overkill on the joints. Or uh, you can't thread it. It's basically plastic uh, underneath. So you would uh we, we can embed inserts uh with metal to create fastening points or you can through bolt it you could rivet it um so that, that's that's made mainly your two options um we could bond it to another piece of metal and then you weld that metal to whatever else you want to melt, weld it to but if you let me have the first piece let me have the whole trailer and we don't need any yeah. welds okay cool that's good man and here's a follow-up is there a price per linear foot is that even is there a way to give that answer 
Uh, not to the public. Not right now. Right. Okay. That's it wouldn't. It wouldn't. That's kind of the wrong question. The right question is um, price per performance. Yeah. Because uh, you don't necessarily design it the same way you would design a, a steel or aluminum counterpart, right, Blake? Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, I imagine that probably gets that's apples and oranges, probably. A little yeah. bit. And I don't know, and this is just throw this out there, as applicable this is to auto haulers. Um, I was at AHA, uh, and, and I think you were there at the, the city winery event, and one of the Peterbilt guys was talking to me, and he goes, you know where this really makes sense, the concrete truck guys. He's like, because you can't put half a car on a trailer, but you could put a half a pound into that concrete truck. So if there's some concrete truck guys out there, we're also interested in talking to you because maybe we can increase your uh, cubic yards. I think they typically haul nine and a half to 11 cubic yards. And if we can add one or two more cubic yards, that payload capacity and, and the, the value add we can make for that industry is also really, really great. Yeah, oh, I just wanted to ask you that. Um, if somebody does know somebody that wants to know more about this, <laughs> right? Because, well, that's people yeah. get to talking. You're not going to believe what I saw the other night. These guys with these red hats were talking. <laughs> so how can people contact you? Uh, so our website is atomic-6, like the number six, dot com. Okay. They can, they can shoot me an email. It's Trevor, T-R-E-V-O-R, at atomic-6.com. Uh, that's a that's a great place to start. We have an Instagram, we have a Facebook, we have a LinkedIn. If you Google any of those, atomic hyphen six.com, you'll find us. Facebook, Sweet. Instagram, LinkedIn. Okay, cool. Atomic hyphen six. And that I mean that is the uh that that's that's the name. That's your brand, right? Yeah, so so we uh we came up with that name, you know, the, it's a good the name. Blake and I are, Blake's even more so a, a science geek than I am, but I love, we're, we're friends uh, and we love talking about quantum physics. So we're kind of science science geeks, but the name behind our company, Atomic Six, so the, the atomic number on the uh, periodic, periodic table. table. Yeah, the periodic table for carbon, the number is six. So we thought Atomic Six. And uh, it was a, it was a, that was a good name for the company. Yeah, that is, that is, cool. A, that is cool. No, that's actually really cool. I like that. I love the periodic table. It's actually pretty neat. It's kind of mind blowing that, right? This is where science meets God. Okay, let's take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <Easy>. I w- <laughs> I'm always doing that. You know, I I want to thank you guys for being on the show. This was fun. Did did we cover it all? I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I was looking over my notes. Do we leave out anything? that we needed to cover? Uh, you know, I think, I think the last thing that we didn't talk about was just how passionate Blake and I are for this company. We, we see this as a total game changer, not just for trucking, but for ultimately aerospace, rail, logistics, you know, anything where we can either increase payload capacity or increase performance. I mean, we, we had a conversation the other day about military and defense applications. What if we made a gurney out of carbon fiber? You could haul your injured, you know, military man quicker because because the gurney's lighter. So I mean, there are a lot of other applications, but ultimately we want Atomic Six to be a lifelong company for us, and we're so excited about it and enthusiastic. You know, we love exotic cars and making things fast, and hopefully, you know, one day we'll see one of our products on Formula One. Um, but just it's, it's Blake and I are good friends. We, and we were both serial entrepreneurs and we're very excited about this, this company. And we've got a lot of interest from a lot of different verticals and, um, just so thankful that you guys would have us on the show and, and, and hopefully can get some more feedback, um, for auto haulers. You know what I like about what, what the neat thing about materials is that it really gets you thinking what's possible because if you can keep the strength and other benefits, anti-corrosive, et cetera, and and then if it was somehow more malleable on the fly, oh, that'd be insane. I don't know how malleable carbon fiber is going to be. <laughs> well, it would be the next generation of carbon fiber. It would be you know, you know, like Terminator Three and all that stuff. Yeah, you know? look yeah. out, Neo. You know all that. You know. Yeah. No, we're just uh, we're super excited about it, and just uh, the applications they, they're like, really good. Could it? Could a th- could a three D printer in the future do carbon fiber? 
there are three there are already 3d printers doing carbon fiber we're intelligent morpheus <laughs> we're friends <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give another plug uh we're friends with the folks at continuous composites great company out of idaho 3d printing there are benefits to that versus the process that we use so 3d printing currently and blake jump in anywhere but currently can't get to the structural integrity that you get out of the process that we use so there are benefits to both um, you know they're a little bit more mobile and agile in what they're printing because obviously it's a printed material but you know you just can't quite get to the structural integrity but yes to answer your question there are 3d printing carbon fiber companies right. and our buddies over at continuous composites are great i'll see them next week in chicago for a that's cool you, you can't 3d print aluminum you can't 3d print steel right well actually can you <laughs> what? yeah <laughs> really wow that's crazy yeah wow there's, there's that is couple, yeah right so mine's, jay mine's blown all right well listen as shaggy pointed out we're running pretty late so we got to let the kids go to bed all those car hauling kids out there listen i want to thank you guys so much for being on the show tonight ty thanks for sticking around so long trevor and blake thanks for sharing atomic six with us I think you, you've made me think. I know several people out there are, you know, they're trying to think, well, what are the really tough questions? I can crack these guys open. So, but you guys did a great job on the presentation and information, and I, I really appreciate it. Awesome, <laughs> right. man. Thank you yeah. so much for having us up. Oh. All right, thanks. <laughs> keep, keep us posted, okay? All right, we'll do. <laughs> See you guys. Right. Good night, you guys. Thank night. you. Thank you. All right, I'll click end meeting there. Boom, and boom, and then I need to do... Okay, wait a minute. Before I do that, let's do that. See, this is at the end of the show here. I gotta... I get, it gets a little gangly. So I gotta do... Oh, I think I can do this. And I can change this camera back. Boom, boom, he's back. And we're back at the main screen. Dude, it's only been two and a half hours. My gosh, Jay, what kind of show is this? Keeping people up late, wearing silly hats. Listen, you guys. I mean, it, it has been another interesting show. They're always interesting. I'm sorry that Jason Harris couldn't make it tonight. Um, he had a conflict and an emergency of some type. But we'll have him back on the show at another time. Talking with Ken at C4 Auto Group about dealership marketing strategy was really fascinating. Not only how a dealership you know, gets their new leads for new customers and where that data comes from, but also advice to the car hauling community uh, for your business, tips on how to make friends with dealers at auto auctions and uh, work with them at the dealership so that they... You know, they look at you as the go-to guy. Move it quick and get it done fast and be on time and communicative. You know, it's the basics, but it's the things that help us understand that there really is a human being you can talk to, shake his hand, say hello, get the business, and uh, it really works. And that's what Ty talks about. And you know that if you want to learn more about that, you can talk to Ty at ctsbusinesscoaching.com. I'm going to put it right here because he's going to be in ctsbusinesscoaching.com. He's going to be in Nashville July 26th with Shaggy's Consulting and Training Group. There it is. There's the plug, Shaggy. It's only taken me two and a half hours. Uh, also, I want to thank Blake and Trevor of Atomic 6 for spending time teaching us about their company, telling us more about the materials and their ideas and it's if you want to get a hold of Atomic Six, you got another question you're just dying to ask. You can email Trevor. It's Trevor at Atomic Six dot com, and he wants to hear from you. So I appreciate that. So then after this show, listen, I'm about to wrap it up. I'm going to run that car hauler, and then uh, and then the show will you know overnight do its little upload magic on YouTube. I'll finish it off tomorrow with the SEO and the descriptions and all that stuff. So do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps me rise in YouTube. I appreciate you tuning in, spending this time with me. Actually, honestly, I know that the live view count may look low, but let me tell you something. To get somebody's attention for two, two and a half hours uh, regularly, week after week, that's insane, man. It's awesome. It means that there is something happening here, and you know it. 
Because if you read the news and you look at what's happening, look at the mobile apps and the crazy news and the, the people that are vanishing and the checkout lines that are now self-checkout and the talk of all the robots. And I mean, it, the world seems like it's gone crazy and the rates are down. And anyways, that's why we're here. That's why Auto Transport Intel is here. That's why Ty at CTS Business Coaching is here. That's why we work together, and that's why this is a building community. There's a lot to keep up on, and that's why I'm here week after week. This was episode 89, and you guys, I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary of doing this show. So please stick around, tell your friends. Thanks so much for your time, and I'll see you next week. I'll be live again at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, and I'll see you soon. You guys, peace out.